Hello and welcome to the Anime Dumpster Dive Podcast, where we go in-depth on an anime that's been considered trash by pretty much anybody. I'm your host and high school girl obsessed with Antarctica, Jake H. I am joined by my co-host and convenience store worker who wants to do something before she enters college, DJ. Hey, I'm best girl! And my other co-host and girl who was doing nothing with her life and then just kind of tagged along with another person's dream, Anthony. <laughs> That's, uh, it's too close to home. <laughs> uh, we also have a special guest today, uh, and he is our fourth girl rounding us out, a uh, famous idol who is forced to get, go to Antarctica. Uh, Alex- uh, I don't have any friends. I'm just doing this for my job. You know. <laughs> oh, there we go. So, uh, Alex, you are new to our podcast, so something we like to ask our guests is, um, what's the worst anime you've ever seen? <clears throat> oh, shit. I should have had the list up for this. I honestly should have seen this one coming. Probably, um, let me look at this. Ooh. See, I don't watch bad animes, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Probably some shit DJ has showed me, to be honest. Uh, fuck. I don't know. I don't, I don't know, man. I don't think I've ever seen an anime I like didn't like, to be completely honest. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's yeah. cool. So what's your favorite anime? Favorite anime? Uh, probably Hunter x Hunter. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. I like a lot of those, those action ones, you know. I like Mob Psycho 100, new season coming out in like two weeks. Oh yeah, that does come out pretty soon. Yeah, so that's yeah. pretty cool. Looking that's a big deal. Yeah. I do also remember uh, some boy in this podcast telling me uh, about Violet Evergarden as well. Mm. Mm. Ooh, man, that's some that's good stuff. That's on my plan to watch. I need to watch. I was that. like, who is cutting onions? Honestly, like. <laughs> Every episode, it's like new end, and ooh, so sad. Anyway, worth watching. Worth watching. All right. Nice. You haven't seen that one, Jake? No, it's on my plan to watch. I kind of uh, end up falling back because of this podcast, where like I'm like, I want to watch this good anime, and then I I yeah, can't I mean, because I have to watch a bad anime. Yeah, for something put on by Netflix, you know, I'm just like super impressed. Well, honestly. The- the way the Netflix original anime series works is that Netflix just gets the distribution rights. Like, they, yeah. Netflix doesn't actually make that. Like, a different studio makes it, and then Netflix goes, look what I made. Yeah. So, um, then, I'm curious, is that how uh, is that how Amazon Prime does theirs as well? Yes. Okay. Ooh, Prime animes. Yeah. Well, actually, to, uh, not to, not to kind of toot... Uh, Amazon Prime's horn, but Made in Abyss was honestly one of the best animes to be released. Yeah, but it suffered a bad release in the U.S. because it was back when Amazon Prime had the anime strike service, which mm-hmm. was a complete mm-hmm. failure. Oh. I just remembered my least favorite anime, actually. Oh. Sword Art Online. Oh, oh no. Have you told Garrison? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I mean, you know, just not my style. We could leave it there. <laughs> it's a call back. That's a callback to a couple episodes back. Garrison yeah. uh, touted uh, Sword Art Online as being one of his favorites. Yeah. Uh, I just remember watching it in high school, and, like, I wasn't really into anime at the time, you know, and I just thought it was just terrible. I yeah. thought it was god-awful. Yeah. But <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Maybe it's if different. I revisit it, you know. It's not it, the best. It's certainly not the worst anime I've seen, but it's, yeah. it's not the best. <laughs> if it was a 13-episode season, would it be on this podcast? No, it'd be the, one of the best anime of all time. Oh, really? 13-episode well, season. <laughs> when they ended when it was good? Yeah, when they ended when it was good? Yeah. That's classic. Uh, okay, so um, the anime that we're going to be talking about today is A Place Further Than the Universe. And it was Anthony's side of the coin in the coin toss for uh, what good anime we're going to watch this season. So uh, I'm going to let Anthony go ahead and give us that synopsis. Yeah, absolutely. So Place Further Than the Universe is our standard, uh, well, no, I don't want to say standard. It is a slice, slice of life anime that follows four friends or four girls that 
later become friends uh, as they embark on a journey uh, full of laughter and full of the most important part, penguins. Uh, wait, did I let Anth- did I let DJ do the intro or did I let Anthony do the intro? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's well, it's, uh, I don't know what. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's there's not very many twists. <laughs> Okay, in short, a girl is obsessed with Antarctica. People tell her she's not going to go. She goes. She <laughs> yeah, fuck, she, goes. Yeah, she, she fucking she goes. goes. All right. So uh, A Place Further Than the Universe is uh, produced by Studio Madhouse, which has made anime such as Death Note, One Punch Man, and No Game, No Life. Mm. Good to know. It is uh, directed by Atsuko Ishizuka, who also directed... Uh, Episodes of Chihaya Furu, no game and uh, no game, no life. So there's a few no game, no life, um, like Easter eggs in this anime. Like especially at the convenience store, it's always like this. There's always like posters for like a new movie that will never come out type deal. And uh, there is no source material. It's a anime original. Oh, nice. which I like that. Uh, which seems to be like anime yeah. originals tend to go uh, pretty well in my experience uh, uh, dealing with them. So uh, let's go ahead and dive on into uh, A Place Further Than the Universe. Uh, So before we go into our spoilers, we like to talk about the main characters as well as our first impressions. So uh, just to give Alex a sense of how we do this, DJ, how about you tell us uh, about your first impressions uh, like with the anime, like going into it? I was like, oh, man, this is cute. And then it was. It so true. To be cute. So true. Just, just a wholesome experience the entire time. Uh huh. Really, you know, just like a really good general motif, you know, kind of growing up, doing something out of your comfort zone. Uh, a lot of laughs. It was very cute, you know. Yes. Definitely a, a cute one. I will say uh, I went into it not really thinking I would enjoy it as much as I did. Like, I thought, eh, it's going to be a cutesy, cutesy little uh, anime. But I, I enjoyed it a lot. All things considered, we were on the, probably the the high point of some of the worst anime we've ever watched in this season. Oh, so I was I was really excited to watch, watch this. Like, n- not... Not using the, all of the hype from Reddit as kind of like fuel for, uh, you know, the, like driving me to watch this. It it honestly interest, interested me, and like I could honestly tell within the first few episodes that I was going to thoroughly enjoy this this show. Okay, so uh, we have we have four main uh, main characters. So uh, let's go ahead and let's start with uh, we'll go from like. Uh, the latest introduced to our like main character. So, what do you guys think of uh, Yuzu? She was the idol uh, girl. Oh, a lot from, of from, from the front to the back here. I mean, to the back to the front. Yeah, yeah. back to the front. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, like I wait, Alex. Did you say she had a lot of growth or? Yeah, a lot of character growth. You know. Yeah, ex- definitely. Good. She like I. Something I really didn't expect with this show, because I thought it was just going to be cute, was, like, it seemed like every character kind of had their own, like, episode that was, like, a very condensed arc. And so I really did like Mm -hmm. her transformation from when we first see her and her, like, growth with these characters. Yeah, something I noticed with this anime was every character, um, you know, including, like, the leaders of the expedition and stuff, all had a moment where it was like, you're hiding something. And then over the course of, for the four main characters, they each did have their whole episode just for themselves. But, uh, you know, the little secrets and stuff kind of came out, and right? And everybody kind of grew from the experience, which was cool. Yeah. No, I agree. Okay. Yeah, I, li- I liked Yuzu. She was um, extremely interesting. You know? I think uh, she had the most growth. Um, she starts out really, you know... Maybe not the most growth. I don't know. Maybe I'll take everything I said back because of Anthony's reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony's like, huh? 
I I no, she say that. super scared and like I just want friends and then at the end she's like you know what you guys are my friends you know what I like you guys yeah I would say that that she has an equal amount I will say that I will give you that that she has the equal amount of character growth um, as Shirase does they're all equal. Yeah, yeah you know yeah. but um, I'd say it's like you know just as a character by herself she's uh, you know, she added a lot to the story and thankfully, you know, wasn't at the detriment of, of uh, being interesting or, or like, down downplaying any of the other characters. She was definitely part of the, the main crew, and I enjoyed any time that she was on the screen. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I'll, before we go on to our next character, I will say that this anime did a great job of just balancing, like, the four mm-hmm. characters. Like, where no character kind of just felt, like, there. Even though mm-hmm. it seemed like Yuzu, out of all of them, was introduced to just be there. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, you know, she's actually... Like, because that's always a problem. That's always a problem with anime that have, like, here's our main cast, and they introduce them, like, slowly, is that the one that gets introduced last is always the least developed. Mm-hmm. And I thought, like, all of them were developed equally. I liked... Uh, <laughs> I liked how they did that. Like, um, you're introduced to the first girl, and you're like, okay, so this is going to be the girl. This is the one that starts the whole thing. And then she meets this other girl, and you're like, oh, wait, no, she's she's kind of the driver of the plot here. All right, that's okay. That's different, you know? I, I like that. I mean, her, kind of the most important character, right? Without her, they wouldn't have been able to go yep, on the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that kind of got... I feel like that aspect kind of got downplayed, you know, right? That there's, like... You know, they are actually just here because, you know, she's basically paying for it. So, <laughs> you know, music is basically um, the only reason they were able to go. But yeah. That was fine. That's a good point. That is a very good, very good point. point. She is kind of their, uh, like, the, the answer to their, like, main problem was the the, uh, the transportation to Antarctica. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, our second character is the, uh, is the third one introduced of our main uh, quartet. And that is uh, Hinata Miyaki, and uh, they meet her when they get part time job. Where uh, Mari gets a part time job at the convenience store. And again, one of those characters who I thought was kind of just like stapled on to grew great, like grew into a great character because <laughs> she's like, "I heard you guys talking about Antarctica. I want to go." And I'm like, oh, I'm like, well, this is gonna be stupid. And then instantly, I kind of was on board with her going. I'm like, all right, right bring well, her on. This is such I a like her a lot. Character. Yeah, probably the most. She was funny. She added a lot of of uh, comedy, you know. And it, it wasn't it it wasn't unnecessary. It didn't didn't feel like I was telling DJ this a little earlier that it that it doesn't it didn't feel tropey. You know, it, it was always entertaining. Uh-huh. So I, I feel like Hinata added a lot, a lot of that. So, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I like, I liked her a lot because I liked her in like in certain scenes. She kind of seemed like, uh, like team mom, where she was like watching out for everybody, and then in other scenes, uh, they're they're walking, and she's like the main cause of their grief. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I liked yeah. her because she just yeah. she. She seemed like she was enjoying herself the whole time. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, I think the way she was written, and the fact that she's a girl that's just really trying to, you know, enjoy herself and have her best life while she's um, waiting for college to happen. You know, I think the way she's portrayed is very plays very well into the way she's written. It's like mm-hmm. you know what she really seems like that person. Mm-hmm. Right. While also being interesting and vulnerable, well, that's that's what I really liked about this per, this particular character. So she shows that she is strong up front, and you know, and we all have our little weaknesses, you know, that we could say. But uh, you know, thankfully, she, her vulnerabilities kind of come out, um, you know, towards the end and, and really lock down that character development. I really liked that. Yeah, definitely, definitely <laughs> solid, uh, solid character. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> So then we uh, we get in, uh, we'll go on our next character and I feel like she's kind of our like uh, deuteragonist um, out of the four. Like I feel like good our... word, good word. Yeah, thanks. Uh, and, and that's uh, Mari Tamaki. She we get introduced to her right away. She's like the character that we open on, um, and kind of like the like idea like oh this is going to be our main character, our driving force, and she like kind of isn't. <laughs> 
we uh I'd say like out of all the characters um she definitely had like that the the biggest thing to like a trope character but I still liked her right no. right stuff. like a high, 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 random high school girl who who doesn't know what she's going to do out of high school she feels lost how many times have we seen that you know before in in specific animes and you know where I would say it is kind of tropey, it, like you just said, honestly, Jake. I, I enjoyed every second that she was, you know, oh, no, on I the thought, screen. I thought, yeah, I, I thought she was great. I'm just saying, like, she's the closest one to being like, like close added, to that, close yeah. to any like, like all the other ones kind of like felt like like um, authentic characters, and she feels authentic as well. But there's mm-hmm. like a lot of times where I feel like they kind of leaned into the ditzy anime girl. Right. right. Yeah. Mm. I do get that. I do get that. But I mean, like, holy crap! That first episode, like, she's really relatable. Like, oh, she's like, oh, well, you know, I don't like to do a lot of things because I'm afraid I'm going to fail. And like, that's like a legit fear a lot of people have is of mm-hmm. not wanting to do anything because of the possibility of failure. Right. Yeah. Chalk that one up on a plus one for Anthony's must-have list. <laughs> Relatability. <laughs> Relatability. Yeah, she grew a lot, too, right? I mean, by like by the time they were leaving for Antarctica, she was, like, completely different, you know, like, super confident, you know. That's why when the other character, you know, uh, Megu, right, was, you know, giving all this shit, she's like, I don't care. We're going. Right, uh-huh. right. It's like I'm not scared. I'm not scared of failing. You know, right. like that's pretty badass. You know. And yeah. Well, I mean, like even within the first, this is getting a little ahead of ourselves, but even within the first couple of episodes, we see kind of that character growth, kind of what uh, Alex was kind of just hinting at as well. So, you know, you can already tell kind of the trend that's going to be happening with the rest of the show. I, I think that they got her her growth out of the way fairly early. Um, but again, not at the detriment of the story. I felt like the girls continued to grow and continued to be relatable in that sense. Their vulnerabilities were were there, and and, and uh, that's all I have to say about that. Forrest Gump. <laughs> Thanks, Forrest. Oh. <laughs> Real quick, I just I just want to pause. Alex, say Antarctica again. Antarctica. Okay, Jake, say Antarctica. Antarctica. DJ, you t- you too. Antarctica. Okay. I mean, so, sometimes I pronounce it Antarctica. Antarctica. I don't yeah. say the C. I don't say the <laughs> the first C. I go right? Antarctica. It's Antarctica. a big part to, to, to pronounce it every syllable in there. You know. Anthony, how do you stop being a fucking jerk and let people pronounce? I'm it? just, I'm just saying. I just wanted Antarctica. to point that funny fact out. Antarctica. Yeah. That's what Antarctica. I, say. I can't believe this anime was even about Antarctica. Honestly, it's such a weird concept. It, like, it's it such scary. a strange concept. Yeah. And right, like, like with a strange concept. We get a strange protagonist. <laughs> yeah, we do. Uh, and that's our uh, that's our main girl, uh, Shirase uh, Kubujizawa. And uh, I like her a lot. I like yeah, her me a too. Lot. Me too. But so it doesn't start out on her, correct? No, it starts out no. on it starts out on Mari. Yeah. So I find some, confused. Find some William parents order, and then you fucking. Did it backwards? Sorry, Jim. I meant to go in like I meant to go, I, I meant to go in importance, and then I I accidentally said a thing, and then I screwed it up, and then I changed it midway through. <laughs> well, I think just, they're all equally. They important. are all important. Improvise, adapt, evolve. Bear grills this, DJ. Come on. I think they're all equally important. So I liked her. I liked her. She had the great. She had the best. Um, how do I want to word this? She was. She was the. Unpredictable, the um, yeah, exactly. Protagonist, and not in a way that like where some of our really, really bad animes that we've watched, you know, have been like. What was that one with the where they were all part of the Chinese zodiac? What was that, Juni Tazen? Juni Tazen. Yeah, like something like that. Like, thankfully, it wasn't something like that where it was just so unpredictable. Like, what is this character going to do next? But unpredictable in the sense that like her character traits can be very tropey on the outside, right? She's like this stoic girl who's, who can be mean if she doesn't get her way. And like, then you find out that, you know, her, her, I don't want to call them heel turns, but like her, her changing in her, her um, character, you know, they, they, they come at an unpredictable moment for the better. That kind of makes sense. 
I th- I think one of my favorite lines in the in the show is when uh, Mari asks her, it's like, oh, well, what are you going to do Like, if you go to Antarctica? And she goes, well, I'm going to tell everybody I did it and, <laughs> in their face. And she goes, well, well, you're kind of mean, aren't you? She goes, yes, definitely. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I like her. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. like, that's so true because people are constantly telling her she's not going to go. And so... Right. She's like, oh yeah, if I, it's it, like not like petty as fuck, and I I really like her. Me too, because she has that Me appearance too. of like that almost um, student council president looking girl in right. like anime, but she is right. she's far from it. Right, kind of like a citrus. Yeah, yeah. The DJ wasn't there for that one. DJ wasn't there for that. Damn, like that. Everybody... Wasn't that a lesbian sex anime? Yes. <laughs> 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 Okay, so maybe not exactly like Citrus, but <laughs> wow, yeah, a cool character. She definitely had, like two sides to her, right? She had that really stern, um, you know, yeah. professional kind of, you know, dimensional. Yeah, 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 she had like that very, um, you know, confident demeanor in certain aspects. But you know, she really also had like a lot of shortcomings and stuff like that that she kind of worked through throughout the anime, like inhibitions and. Things like that relating to her mother, and um, not to you know spoil anything yet or whatever. But it was cool because you know I mean she wasn't perfect, right? It was almost kind of like a front that she put up for people. Mm-hmm. Um, it had the biggest moment, you know, like the it's kind of all waiting for her to finally, you know, a lot of the animes her waiting for her to speak about you know what happened and how she feels about it and stuff. Um, I think for that reason, she's the most closed off, too. Even more than the girl who her trope is to be closed off. Uh-huh. I, uh, the main character girl is more closed off than her. No. Cool. Uh, was it? She's... Uh, she She even says, like, her, like, defining character traits, like, being stubborn. Because, right. like, she has that moment when, uh, in Singapore where she says it. She's like, I'm stubborn. I know that. Like, you can be... Like you can, like you can have your thing, but you gotta realize I have my thing too. And I'm like, yeah, I like that. That's a cool moment. That's a cool yep. moment. Yep. Um, okay, well, that's our uh, four main characters. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump into the spoiler section, uh, where we go episode by episode. So if you would like to not get spoiled and skip right to our ratings uh, and reviews go ahead and jump to the time posted above. Um, Let's right into Antarctica anime. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so before I hand the reins over to Anthony to uh, take us episode by episode, uh, what did you guys think of the opening uh, sequence? Like, oh, fucking great. So oh, good. I watched it every time. Same. I watched it every time. Yeah. I didn't watch it I, every time, but I like. I thought the closing sequence was, like, even better, too. I thought it was, like, really good. The little pangos? Oh. Oh, it's so sad. The little drawings are like, little flowers coming out of their head. Uh-huh. I was yeah. like, this is too much right now, you know? Uh, so The music in general with this anime is just spot on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. It was I good. Agree. It was It's cute. We I... get the little penguin, you know, like, draws a... The story of a journey to Antarctica, and it was like, oh my god. I was like, this is what this anime is about? Hold on. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, when, when it's showing them do like, all their activities in, in Antarctica, like doing jump rope and other stuff, yeah. I was just like, I'm like, I'm, gonna, I'm looking forward to this. This is yeah, nice. Yeah. This is a whole yeah, thing. Exactly. The opening is nice because you're like, oh, it's, they, it's got a whole bunch of scenes of them there. And it's also not a lot. None of those. It's not like they're showing. They're showing you stuff that's future in the anime. You know, mm-hmm. I hate when that's in the opening. It's like wait, wait, for, just wait for these scenes. <laughs> yeah, it's just showing them like, having fun. And it's showing you what the anime is all about, and that's yeah. the, that's kind of opening I like for sure. In well, fact, the, none of the stuff in the opening happens in the anime itself, but it gets referenced to, like the mm-hmm. jump rope competition, uh, her getting sunburned, and all that stuff. Like they. Like the uh, the scene of her getting sunburned is in the opening, and it gets referenced mm-hmm. in the anime. So that yeah. that's pretty yeah. cool. Sunburned. Yeah. 
It was cute. They're doing like all those little like photo shenanigans, you know. They're like holding up the boat and you know that kind of uh, stuff. It was just yeah. super entertaining to watch, honestly. I like the one where she eats them. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, at the very end, yeah. yeah. It's like, and yeah. then they yeah. do reveals. So cute. And the glasses. She like pokes her head out. Yeah, she's all like smiling right. and doing that dumb crap with the glasses. Yeah, oh. yeah just so very fun. Very fun. Yes, nice. yes. Oh, wholesome. Okay, Anthony. Uh, right, you got the take like, it away. You got the help. Here we go. Here we go. We're gonna jump. We're gonna dive right into the episode one. And the episode's one title was one million yen for you. <laughs> yeah, million. So right at the start of this, you know, we already are introduced to Mari and and her or Kimari as she's referred to in the in the anime. Um, you know, and she's talking about how she wants to go on this epic adventure, and she doesn't know what she wants to do. <clears throat> and we're also introduced to Megu Megu Chan, who is the uh, supporting character. And you know, I right glasses. off the bat, what's that? Is that the girl with the glasses? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, glasses girl. Glasses girl. Me. Megu me. Not yeah. Megu, and uh, we're kind of <laughs> introduced to the to to her character, and we kind of get get that kind of feeling that she's more of like a like Kimari might might be a little on the dumb side, and Megu has had to take care of her. You know, we kind of get that just from the first couple of scenes. But they're in school, and uh, later on into the episode, she meets. Uh, Shirase, who is only referred to as Antarctica mm-hmm. at well, the time. She, uh, before she even like hears about that, she sees her at the uh, station, right? And she loses the money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, so she's like getting ready to get onto the to the train, and <laughs> she sees a, st- a stack of money that this girl drops, and she like picks it up and has this huge freak out that it's like. <laughs> That's a million yen. That's a million yen. <laughs> Which is what? Uh, is that? It's like a hundred like thousand. Ten thousand. It's ten thousand. Yeah. Ten thousand dollars. Jeez. Yeah. It's like that's cents. Yen is like cents. Oh, okay. It's a lot of. It's like a. It's a. But still, that's a lot of money. It's a lot so of money. I would. It's a lot. It's a I would. Pennies, dude. Yeah. So then, then the mystery begins. Sherlock Holmes and Watson. Let's figure out why she's got this million dollars, you know, and <laughs> she kind of freaks out. The next day she goes back to school, and this is Kimari, and she has to go to the bathroom. And she follows she follows uh, Shirase into the bathroom, right? Yeah. And while she's in the bathroom, she can hear Shirase, like, like crying, and she, like, you can hear her talking about the money and everything else like that. And yeah, she's Kimari... like slamming her head against something. She's going a million yen, <laughs> yeah. a million yen. Yeah. Which this is important. This is important. So remember this, folks. Um, so she <laughs> opens up the door. She knocks on the door, right? She goes to, but the door swings oh, open. She... Right. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, "What do you want?" <laughs> Kamari has the money, and she gives her the money, and she, we get this. She starts like crying. I think. Yeah, she hugs her and she's like, "Oh my god, you found the money!" Oh, that kind of stuff. She's like, what are you doing with all that money, though? Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So she starts asking questions, and that's where we're introduced to Shirase's goal, and that's to go to Antarctica because that is where her mom is waiting for her. So oh, we do. Going. <clears throat> we learn a little bit more about um, Shirase's. Vow? Would you call it a vow? Yeah, her dream. Her dream. dream. Okay, that works. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, not much else hap- happens well, in that in that episode, right? No, she. Uh, it's we. It gets revealed that's her dream. Yeah. But it also shows off that she's very like um, passionate about it, and like right, she's like right. she's like that's her goal in life is to go. And soon, and that's does uh, Mar Mar uh, Mar says uh, Kimari says like, she's gonna go right. She's mm-hmm. in this episode. Yeah, she reads. Yes. The, she yeah. tells her about the book, and then she goes and reads the book. And that's where she gets. And then she gets. decides she wants to go after mm-hmm. she reads the book. Yeah, but then so. she uh, she's like you ha- like this isn't a joke. Like you have to be all in, and like right. 
This is what... because people have told me that before and they back out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So she said she said you have to meet me at the train station, right? Yeah. Uh, and well, that's how I know you'll. you'll that's prepare. right. That's right. And her and Megu have this whole big argument about hanging out with Antarctica, and Megu brings up the fact that like people make fun of Antar, like Shirase, who you know has this. Uh, I would call it an kind of this outlandish goal to get down to Antarctica. When you think about it, it's like, you can't just go to Antarctica. What? Megu mm-hmm. kind of picks it apart. She's like, what, yeah. how is she expecting to be able to go? Like, Right. Yeah. Well, that's, that's really, you know, indicative of Megu's character too, right? And there's there's fault in that. Mm-hmm. Later <laughs> term, is she kind of analyzes things and, um, you know, over-analyzes, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but Kimari ends up meeting uh, Shirase at the uh, at the train station, and that's where we get the first first uh, closing closing title. Yeah, and that's where I fell in love with that closing title. It's so good. I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask DJ what he thought about this before the end. Like the yeah. music roll starts to roll in before like yeah. scenes are over. Yeah, I dig that. What did you think about the uh, the closing song, D? I liked it. It was cute. They had a couple the, of, like... Mm. No, I think I like them about the same. I was going to say I like the opening better, but I think they're both... They're both so the, the reason why I asked about the song is because, I, I mean, I don't know anything about singing. And there is kind of, like, a little bit of, like... I felt like there was, like, some harmonies in there. I don't know. Oh, it was... Yeah. Dude, I fucking love that song, right? I like yeah, the... Right? The scenes in the opening are better, but I like the song in the closing a the lot. Closing, like, the closing song. The closing yeah, song, like, hits, hits, like, hits the emotions, you know? I'm like, yeah. oh, so cute, right? I dig that. I dig that. Okay, and then... Oh, we wrong. Episode one. Episode yeah. one. I, I took a few notes of just little funny moments and stuff that I liked in each episode. The one in, in episode one that I really liked was when they're on the train at the very end after... You know, Kimari shows up, and they're like, oh, my God, we're so committed. We're going to go to Antarctica. And they're taking a picture of Mount Fuji. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. And that guy won't move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, yeah, and, uh, that's she, right. like, sends the picture to, to Megu, uh, Megumi, and there's, like, still, like, a bald guy's head, like, half in the picture. <laughs> it's, like, yeah. so funny. Yeah. But, uh, uh, this show's filled with... Like a lot of comedic moments, which are great. Like even if they're little mm-hmm. ones, like that. Yeah. yeah, classic. I was I was telling I was telling DJ that some, like further into the anime, I feel like some of it feels a little tropey, where it's like very meme meme related. You know, they're all. It's always like a reaction. You know, like where it, faces. It's like oh yeah, where there's always like a like a moment to moment for like reaction, like. <laughs> Honey, like what? Like what? Like what are you saying? Like, uh, you know. But it, <laughs> like, I don't get tired of it, uh-huh. and I'm happy that they introduce it like early on. And I yeah. and I'm 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 so on board with this show's comedy. Like I, I'm a big fan. So, um, that was episode one. Do we have anything else we want to say about episode one? Uh, nope, not for okay. me. Okay, episode two. Here we go. Uh, episode two was uh, Kabukicho Fremantle. So, and I think that this is the episode where they start finding out about like locking down the plan. And I think that this is where Megu gets really, really in depth on like, okay, this is ridiculous. You're saying that you want to go, but how are you going to pay? Uh-huh. So then she goes through and she asks uh, Shirase. This is uh, Kimari. She asks Shirase, Shirase, like, okay, what do I need to do? She's like, well, I'll tell you what I did. I got all these different jobs, and that's how I got a million yen. Uh-huh. And she's like, oh, shit, I'm going to need to get another job. Well, I yeah. like that, that she finds that prostitution job. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, I don't think it was that, as far as prostitution. Oh, sorry, escort. escort. Right, right. I think it... I well, just hang out with men. It's a good, great job. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. They will do a different one. It comes up twice. That's the funniest part. It's like yeah. she's going through the list with Megu the first time, and she's like, oh, what about this one? Oh, looking for high school girls? Uh, just want to hang out with boys? <gasps> this is a good one. And Megu's like, no. 
And then Shirase brings it up too. And yeah, she like holds it out in the magazine. Yeah. So and at this point, they, I guess, I guess it's important to note too that there are little nuances of this of this show, like. I will say that it, it is pretty smart, like, like in their imagery and the, what they what they show you on screen, you know, because how many times has Hinata already been kind of shown at this yeah. point? You know, she's been shown quite a few she's times. Definitely in the background, like mm-hmm. while they talk. Mm-hmm. So, and thankfully, that was like the little blurb, I guess, that we get at the ending credits of, of, of episode one. So, um, thankfully, we're introduced finally to Hinata in this episode, and um, she... That is in part due to the fact that Kimari lands a job at the same convenience store. And how uh, <laughs> how perfect uh, would it be to have a conversation about going to Antarctica? Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> at work. <laughs> at work. Uh, where Hinata basically says, hey, I uh, I heard you guys talking about Antarctica. I want to go. Because, I mean, she's pretty much questioning her everywhere they go mm-hmm. because the glasses girl is bringing up all these questions. Mm-hmm. And then, like, she's got she's got a plan for each of the problems that, that she brings up. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't find out um, what potential obstacles they're going to be until a little bit later. I don't think any of the obstacles that the glasses girl bring up actually end up being obstacles for her. Right. She right. already thought through all that. Right, and we get like I said, like I was saying too. Shirase basically breaks down exactly what needs to happen. Where they were, they they will need to go to Fremantle, which is in Australia, and then from Fremantle, basically they they load a ship, which would be like an icebreaker ship, and end up going down to um, Antarctica. A- Antarctica, yes, that is that is what I meant to say. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm gonna say uh, Icebergville. Iceberg I, uh, I like that we kind of get this like info dump, but like a very organic, very fluid info like exposition dump on uh, Hinata real like really quickly because they're like, "Well, you're gonna have to get time off school," and she goes, "Well, I don't go to school." And she's like, "Right." They're like, "Oh," and she goes, and then you think, "Oh, she's like a high school dropout." She's like, well, "No, no, I I graduated high school already." She's like, "I mm-hmm. went out and I got like the equivalent of like a GED." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, because she was a, uh, she says something like she's a, uh, she was over like high school, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, so she's basically just been killing time working at like the convenience store, killing time before uh, college entrance exams, right. and so she realized that she hasn't really done anything, and like that's mm-hmm. why she kind of latches onto this idea, and I, I like that. Got a GED? I think she like graduated early. Like she took whatever high school proficiency exams they needed, like, early and passed them all. Oh, okay. Because she, I, I don't know if she ever brings up the fact about diploma, like, getting her diploma or anything else like that. This is also, we're talking about, like, Japan. Japan. I think they have, like, like, a, they have, like, a high school, like, graduation exam or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's so like, maybe she did that, really. Yeah, right. where they, the test. Because she's also right. smart. Like, she also brings that up. She goes, I'm not oh, dumb. Yeah. Like, right. So. Oh yeah, she kicks ass. She's a, she's a little ass kicker. And this is yeah. something I have to bring up now because this episode has that chase sequence. And oh, I yeah. for the love of for the oh, love when they go to uh, when they go to Tokyo. Oh yeah, <laughs> that whole bunch of- <laughs> yeah, that's right. Shinjuku, right? Yeah, yeah, they, uh, yeah. They go to Shinjuku. I stood there. <laughs> yeah, is that in Tokyo? Yeah. Yes, it is. Oh no, kidding! I yeah, mean, so- Tokyo. Yes. Yeah. So the, uh, okay. Dude, it looked like they were running super fast. I was like, fuck. Well, no, this was, like, the thing like, I'm going to bring up about this scene specifically is Hinata is outrunning this woman who has a lot of t- training. And mm-hmm. I'm like, how mm-hmm. is she outrunning her? And then it gets yeah. answered later because she was on <laughs> yeah. the track team. And oh, that makes, I didn't even think about that, man. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm telling you. I was like, damn, Hinata's like, dude, she's like pumping her arms and they're like, you know, like arrow hands. I'm like, Fuck, dude, she's going fast. Like, go this way, I'll go that way. I'm fast. And she's like, yeah. yeah. And you're like, why yeah. is she so fast? Yeah. I, didn't yeah. about, I didn't make the connection. That's cool. Those little nuances, dude. I was telling you about them early on. This show's got them. I love that about it. Yeah. Um, so I, and we get introduced to some supporting characters in this episode as well, which we were kind of just talking about in that chase scene. Uh, basically, they, the girls are chased through uh, Shinjuku, this kind of area in Tokyo, because they were supposed to go there and meet up with the community 
exploration uh, or, or the Antarctica Community Exploration Society or something like that. Basically, just a, a privately funded expedition where scientists would um, go and and basically use Japan's uh, testing facility down in Antarctica. So we kind of introduced to, oh gosh, I, can, I don't even know what her name is. Uh, I just Ka- had this up. Yuzuku? Kane, uh, ya- Kane, Kane, Kane? Oh, yeah. And Yumiko. Okay. Yeah, Yumiko and Kane. 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 Dude, everyone's yeah. name in this anime is honestly pretty hard to remember. Yeah, they are, they, yeah. these ones are one of the more tough ones. Yeah. Uh, maybe because it's, like, real instead yeah, of... Yeah, I was going to say, they're, like, real <laughs> Japanese yeah. names. <laughs> instead of being, like, super simple, like... <laughs> like, like Goblin Slayer, and I'm like, I know that yeah. name. Yeah. That guy is Goblin Slayer. Player and... <laughs> Girl and, and Lizard Man. That's the... the Morph and Elf. Adventures Guild elf. Slut. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so we're introduced in, in there, and then we're also given a little backstory in this too. This is not Shirase's first run-in with these two girls. So, and we kind of uh, get a little backstory when they sit down, um, you know, and kind of talk about it. And you know, this is just building on Shirase's kind of mysterious uh, background that she has, um, an almost infatuation with going to to Antarctica. Mm-hmm. So, pretty cool. And then we move into episode three. Uh, one thing I do want to bring up in episode two is sure. I like that Shiraz, uh, Shirase doesn't have a plan. Well, she has a plan to get like to to get on, okay. <laughs> and that's to seduce a male uh, seduce a male member. Yeah. And they're like, "Well, who's going to do it?" And uh, like they're like, "Well," <laughs> they eventually kind of default to Hinata for a second because she's the only one with like who's well developed. And then I was like, wait a minute, why does it have to be me? Wait a minute. Yeah. yeah. One thing, my little note about episode two, I don't know if you guys can see my screen share, but this point in episode two, or they have a little vending machine that's like Pon Pon Girls, and I was like, what the actual <laughs> fuck is this? You're like, Do you yeah. guys see the screen share? Yeah, I see your screen share. It has like a weird little girl. chime. There's like a weird little chime and everything, and I was like, is this really what Japan is like? I can't wait. You know, All right. so well, uh, to answer your question, literally exactly what everything looks like. Yes, yes. <laughs> that uh, little that little screen right there is for your peep peep card, and then the little slot has all the different yen pieces on it. Yeah. yeah. Later on, I, it might be in the end of this episode when they're riding the train home. They like swipe into the train station, and it is, a, like perfect. It, it is a perfect recreation of what those little fucking train station things look like it looks almost like they took a picture of one like yeah. it, they draw it for some reason yeah. in incredible detail in yeah. that scene. i like i like that about oh that's like the picture i sent to the group chat too yeah yeah i, I like that anime this anime a lot i feel like it it has like a really cool like genuine look into what it's actually like in japan you know <laughs> like the art the way that the art is and stuff yeah. is just really realistic i like it yeah. Usually, like, in train stations and stuff, like, the other animes do pretty well. Like, on the trains and stuff, like, you're like, oh, that looks normal. But this one, like, I've never seen, like, them actually, like, swipe the card before. And, like, you do. It's, like, something that people who live there do a thousand times a day. I don't know why it was never in an anime before. But mm. they take the time to show a shot of it and really detailed show it. Like, the, I mean, in general, this anime is really detailed. Like, um, I don't know a lot about Singapore, but... The episode that they're in Singapore, I recognize shit. <laughs> I'm like, you know that building that has like that that like those three buildings that have that one giant pool on top that looks like a boat. Yeah, you know, that's mm-hmm. real. That's a real thing. Oh shit! Really? Yeah. In Singapore, like the the city of Singapore or the country? Uh, it's just the one Singapore. Just, you know, there's it's a isn't it Singapore the country or the capital of a country named Singapore as well? Just Singapore, you know, it's just normal everyday. Yeah. It's just I think it's just Singapore, Alex. You know? Uh, excuse me, well, I got the screen share up. Okay, we can move on. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> uh, we can move on. 
<laughs> okay. okay, so episode three, uh, we have uh, basically the the largest question, the looming question of how will these three high school girls get to Antarctica? Because so, uh, Shosei's plan of uh, bribing them did not work. No, it did yeah, not, no. Go back real quick. So she didn't bribe them. Plan C didn't work. But plan yeah. B was... Jake brief mentioned it briefly. They were gonna try to get a male member to yeah. fall, like basically fall in love with them. Because later the girls are like, it cuts to them in the cafe, and they're like, "So you were gonna try to get in really close with one of the male members, so they would vouch for you on coming on a trip." It's like yeah. <laughs> basically we just become all these guys' girlfriends, and then they really want to bring us. It's like what? The- <laughs> That's right. That is classic. So well, if only good. if only I thought like that, you know, that's I gotta start using the, <laughs> using that thought process. Uh, it's also the first instance of her trying to get rid of that million yen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She tries to give it away to, for uh, funding, I think, to bribe them to get oh. on. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now now episode three. Now episode three. Episode yeah. Three. So how do we how do we answer the question? Um, there was a little blurb at the end of episode two where, um, oh gosh, where Yuzu is is hanging out on on the tr- on the same train that they were on. on she the was way with the, back. She so. was with the uh, she was with the team, the, An- mm-hmm. the Antarctica mm-hmm. team, right? Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So. Basically, this is the episode that we are introduced to her, thankfully. So they are sitting at uh, Shirase's house, and they're trying to figure out how. And Shirase hasn't necessarily lost her will to go, but she is extremely stumped on how... Not lost her way. How she's... (laughs) I knew it was going to happen. Damn you. (laughs) DJ set me up. I haven't seen the anime, but I know the song. I was... (laughs) Should we watch that one next on the show? No. <laughs> it's good. Anyway. Anyway, Anthony, anyway so, <laughs> so the girls are at uh, this uh, this house, which is Shirase's house. Um, and by the girls, I mean Hinata. Um, our trio. Yeah, our trio at this point in time. Um, so they're discussing on how to get there when there is a random knock at the door. They get the email alert first. They get the email. Oh, they, is that what it, they get the email alert that like, a high school girl is going to Antarctica. Girl, what's up? A little girl. Ah. Yeah, yeah. And then, <laughs> so oh, that's like, right. That's right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. It's it's like one one girl, and it is it's it's Yuzu's name is going to be documenting her trip to Antarctica. So, and then we get a random knock at the door, and we have this hilarious next couple of scenes where she's like looking at her phone and she looks back up at Yuzu and she looks back up at her phone and she's like, it's her! <laughs> Classic. I love that. Like, that's, so, the girl. that's the girl! That's the girl! So Alex has up on the screen share um, these fucking animals that keep on. <laughs> Dude, I want to make a point about this. What the actual fuck? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. They're at multiple <laughs> raccoon no, show. No. These little wooden bears. Or whatever the fuck they, have. they have tits. They all have tits. Up, and they're... All legitimate breasts with nipples. <laughs> they're all, like... It's going to play out so well on the podcast. Oh like when somebody so posted, like, I sent a few pictures to the group that I'm going to Japan with in January. I'm like, we have to find some of these in real life. I'll send the pictures to the other chat, too. But well, I don't know what it is. I think it's just, like, a tr- uh, little little thing in the show that they're like they want to draw these angry creatures i'm not they sure a temple? They're at a temple. they have significance but i'm not sure I, but they keep popping up and um right. it's, it's actually a pretty big part of the show so. <laughs> is, it, is it a big part of the show i don't think so it's like, I, every I, time I there's an exterior it. shot or an establishing shot it like holds on these fucking animals <laughs> yeah, dude. Like the first scene of episode three is they're like each talking, and like every time it goes to a new voice, it's like a new one of these. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Click that play button right there. Click that play button. Yeah, I gotta unmute this shit. No, don't, don't, no, no, Alex, don't, so don't, don't unmute. Find it. Don't a unmute. screen of the um the train station like uh, machine thingy that I saw. Uh, about. Maybe it was a different. Ep- maybe it was episode two or something like that. That they did it. 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so if moving on. Find, I mean, so anyways, anyways, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is so far off, the off topic. Oh it's, it's so far off topic. It's not even funny. Okay, so basically this, the girls are at the house. Uh, Yuzu shows up and she goes, you guys want to go to Antarctica, right? And they're like, yeah, yeah, of course we do. And she looks at at Shirase and she's like, well, you go, you go for me. I don't want to go. You're like, huh? What? Are you serious? And she goes, she has her sequence of yeah. I'm coming, penguins. I'm coming, Aurora. Pengi, ikimas. Wait for me, penguins. Wait yeah. for me. Poof. Yep. Her <laughs> the comic, the the uh, <laughs> classic, um, classic meme that you've seen on Reddit. The the little gif. It's it's so yeah. cute. It, it is. At this point, I am so invested in the show. We're three episodes in. It is so freaking cute. This this show is is definitely a, uh, a heartwarming show. Um, so basically, what ends up happening is uh, Yuzu. At the same time, she's there explaining that she doesn't want to go because she's too afraid. There's another knock at the door, and surprise! It's Yuzu's mom. Yuzu's mom says, "We're leaving this Where the place." Fuck You're been? You're going to you're going to Antarctica, and that's the last thing I'm gonna hear about this. Because she's also her manager, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I like that Yuzu tries to like just go like, oh no, she, uh, Shirazi said she's gonna go for me, and then <laughs> like her mom, being a manager, goes, well, can she do it? Like entertains the idea because yes. like business savvy. Right, right. Like, yeah, you know, we find out, you know, too. Thankfully, Yuzu has been introduced as. Uh, you know, kind of like a child star or an idol, uh-huh. you know, at this point. So uh, that's where we kind of get that into play. And, and at one point in time, they get into an argument. This is Yuzu and her mom. And she's like, Mom, I had never had a chance to, to live my life. I'm out of here. And she runs away. But Yuzu's mom has an idea. She thinks to herself, wait a minute. If I can convince these girls to go. Next scene, she shows back up at the house and she goes, if you can convince my daughter to go, all three of you will get to go to Antarctica with her. You're she like, oh. briefly, but when <laughs> the girls are like, we'll go instead of her. They're like, can't, yeah. they're like, can't she do it? And all three of them were like, try to be idols. Yeah. <laughs> but seriously, she's like, um, here we are in Antarctica. <laughs> we're, um, here. And then they like push her out of the way and they're like, ah! <laughs> I like when Hinata does it. She goes, that's good, but can you do it? Like, that's good, but can you be more attractive? And she goes, ouch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, Hinata's like, attractive. She gives her a complex. So, Next episode, like, opens with her going, like, can I be more attractive? <laughs> uh, it's hilarious. So, um, basically, the rest of the episode turns into how can we convince uh, Yuzu to, to go uh, to Antarctica because I we're all friends. We all do. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So. Yeah, it's because uh, Yuzu never had a like any real friends because mm-hmm. of her acting career, and like these girls basically like offer her like that real friendship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they start hanging out and they start talking about like legitimately wanting to go, and it comes up that um, you know Yuzu is is overall just just afraid. To go, she has some apprehension to go because this is it's it's a huge trip, and she would be going by by herself. So then the girls say, "But we'll be going with you," and that's when <laughs> uh, that's when the the friendship starts to to bud and grow. Uh, and they're going to Antarctica. And they're going to Antarctica <laughs> now. So Thank goodness. Goodness. It, it's yeah. solid. It's they, solid. Yep. Nothing's stopping them now. Yeah, Except basically. For slips. Yeah, exactly. This is this next episode is is probably this is also another scene that I have seen on on Reddit so many times. Like, uh, so episode episode uh, four. I don't think it starts with this. Maybe it starts it does. with them giving the teacher their uh, their permission slips. That's right. That's right. And Megu okay. going, wait a minute, how'd you get your mom to sign yours? <laughs> Yeah. So then the next scene, they're standing in front of of their teacher, and they're and he asks the same thing. He's like, "Where is your permission sl- slip?" 
uh, Kimari, and he she goes, um, my permission slip uh, is right here. <laughs> and so then it cuts, and uh, Kimari's at home. <laughs> she's there with her little sister, and they're they're looking at she's their mom, too, who's <laughs> who's being too normal. Yeah, who's being way too normal cooking dinner, and she's like, uh, "Kimari, can you come in here and help me out?" <laughs> That's when we know something is something's about to go down. She's like, "I kind of want to go in there." <laughs> I, I I love everything's perfect. I'm not. <laughs> I love that the little sister does the classic uh, the the sibling who's not in trouble thing yeah, of yeah. just like like all right, well I'm gonna close this so I'm not involved. <laughs> it's, like the slow, yeah. it's like the slow door close, like you're on your own. Yeah. We've all been there. We've all been there, and it turns out that. Um, <laughs> That uh, they who who whose handwriting was it? Wasn't it Megu's? Uh, no, it's Mari signed it herself. Kamari signed it herself. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> and pandemonium happens. She runs out into the hallway and she's trying to get out the door. <laughs> and her mom's walking down the hallway with a, a ladle in hand. She and she's like, "My woman with the weapon. She goes, That's a cooking instrument." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She opens up the door and her dad comes home and her dad's like, I'm, uh, oh, 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 he slowly shuts the door and she's like, dad, 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 dad. He's like, don't worry, it's going to be over soon. <laughs> I'm sorry, my daughter. I'm sorry, my daughter. Gosh, it's so funny. If you, if you haven't seen that, that little gif or, or the, the show at this point, I'd recommend going to watch it. If you're it. not watching it with us, you know, you, you, need, you need to go. Now. You need to stop what you're doing right now. Go back and watch the show. We're four episodes in. I won't spoil anything else. So, um, at this point, they finally get the get the permission slips on one condition. Kimari has to get an A on all of her exams. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's a big deal. And that's it. Well, they uh, they also... <laughs> and, and that's it. Uh, they also uh, start their training camp. Yeah, that's right. That's and they, right. Meet the, they meet the captain. So, and Megu at this point, too, you know, this is something that I guess we can kind of talk about, too. Like, Megu's overall attitude at this point, you can tell that, that this was you know, a character that was supposed to be involved in Kamari. And honestly, at this point, I thought that she was, because of the way that they introduced her, I thought that she honestly was supposed to have a bigger part in the show. She she does kind of seem like that, like, childhood friend. No. You're half expecting to, them to bring her to Antarctica, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well. But if I know anything about anime, I know the childhood friend never wins. <laughs> never ever. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So she she brings up a lot of good points, you know, things and like, how are you supposed to stay up on all of your, all of your schoolwork? And now you're going to be going to this, uh, to this summer camp. And it's like, this is crazy. You're not going to be able to do it. She starts but, becoming antagonistic in this episode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but the girls end up going on their, um, to their camp, and a familiar face shows up, and this is can I can uh, can can I can, can I uh, the lady the lady in Shinjuku who told Shirase that she she wouldn't get to go. Yeah, she, she picks him up in like some <laughs> dinky van. Yeah, it's, it's got penguins on it though. So like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they're riding there, and Shirase brings up a very very. Uh, interesting point. She says, just as cold as possible, do you guys even have enough funding to be able to go? And I, I love this about Kanai as a supporting character. Her, she never wavers. I love this about her character. She's just like, oh yeah, we're going to find a way. Done. She does and that she, when she offers her, she bribes her too. She's mm-hmm. like, I don't need your, she's like, your money would really help. But we're gonna go anyway, so yeah, we don't yeah. need to take a high schooler. Yep. <laughs> yep. As a supporting character, like I, it's, it is very reminiscent, you know, and and uh, of like 
I, I would say more of a reflection, I guess, towards the end of the series. Like, I, I love that particular point about Kanai as a supporting character. So, oh, so anyways... Yeah, uh, the, oh. Sorry, to just interrupt real quick. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think, like, her character... Like, the character that we see here is kind of like the result of knowing uh, Takako, who is uh, mm-hmm. Shirazei's mom. And so, like, that's really cool to see, is kind of like these characters who have been affected by this character that we know very minimal information about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At this point, at this right? Point, we, yeah. Right, we haven't been introduced to her at all, at so all. we don't know if, um, you know, you know what, what, what she was actually like, or, or, you know, what kind of effect that either of these two characters that we're about to talk about you know, are as well. And we're first introduced now to Jin. Uh, What is her last name? Uh, Jin. Todo. And she is the captain of this uh, exposition? Exploration. Expedition. 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 Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, she is the living, breathing exposition of this story. No, um, she, <laughs> she's the captain of the expedition. So she um, kind of takes them up into the mountains and they explain, like, what the girls are going to have to go through to get used to camping outside and in freezing cold conditions and things like that. So, And we get a very heartfelt scene between Kimari and uh, Jin as well, where she kind of talks. I think this is like the first little blurb where she kind of brings up the fact that um, Takako was was always into uh, the sunrise, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, there's a little information about how Takako was like, mm-hmm. like what she was, what she was like, and it is a very you know pretty scene. Which is at this point, what did you guys think of the animation? I mean, we're four episodes in. I think when it wants to be pretty, it does a really good job of being, like, pretty. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of the times it does kind of have this, um, like, it it has that anime aesthetic. But then, like, when it shows, like, the auroras, it shows the sunrise, it shows the clouds, it shows, like, even the ice breaking. It almost hits this, like, um, almost hits, like, this uh, art expo. Like mm-hmm. type, like like oh, guess what? Uh, we know you like our cutesy anime girl character, but uh, yeah, we're all fucking real artists, and so then mm-hmm. they, they yeah, I feel like the backgrounds, um, the little lots of little scenes where lots of little scenes where like they can just um, they just knock it out of the park background wise. Um, they'll they'll put in lots of little details in all of their scenes where you're like, oh, that that would happen if that happened, but. Um, that, that's like vague to say, but it happens so many times it's hard to pick out a specific time. But like they'll be like working with something, and you're like, oh, that's actually how that would work. Like that's crazy that they animated it that way. <laughs> um, <clears throat> just stuff that really doesn't need to be there, but they really take the time to put in. The backgrounds are all great. Um, you know, it's definitely not like the type of anime where you see like, oh, this is a square room that they're in, and we're just gonna. <laughs> shade it kind of like that happens and they focus on the characters more than the room this is like the backgrounds are elaborate and detailed and it's awesome okay. lots of little the writing is so shiny all they always like translate the writing which is really cool too mm-hmm. like the little bra- background uh, like labels and stuff like that you know yeah yeah and the text messages too yeah i, I really like that I, re- I really liked that aspect i think that at the animation as a whole you know this is something that i this is something i brought up when i was on anime ricochet is like studio madhouse is no they're no slouch you know honestly they 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 do an excellent job at animation and this is something that i think that they should be proud of you know putting into a portfolio because it, it was a very very pretty um Anime, like the animation is is awesome. It is something that I would I would totally point out to somebody if they were asking, you know, what the what the show was like. So, but um, that being said, we can start on episode five. Episode five is called. Oh, episode four was called Four Caterpillars. Episode five is Dear My Friend. So this one is. Uh, I think I texted Jake right after I got done watching this. 
watching this episode. I think I said something along the lines of, oof, the feels or something along the lines. You yeah. texted me on Snapchat saying, I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> That's right. And I went, I haven't even started yet. <laughs> What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and then you typed in all caps, I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> um, so episode five, this kind of just to set the tone. Um, they We kind of get our first little time skip here, too, um, where the girls have been training for a few months and have been... Um, uh, also, Kimari's also been studying. You know, they've been really taking this Antarctica trip pretty seriously. You know, at at, at this point, so and it and it, it is getting closer and closer and closer. Um, they, uh, they even get their um, like their class send offs, right? Mm-hmm. Like their class mm-hmm. gives uh, or gives Kimari a uh, a bouquet of flowers. Shirase <laughs> doesn't have one because in my head when. They went, oh, you're going in Antarctica, and they went to go throw her a party. She was just flipping them all off. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, I'm going, I'm going, going fucker. Yeah, yeah. So at this at this point, they all get up, and uh, Kimari like gives her her speech, and Shirase gives her speech, and I think that all Shirase says was, "I'm going." I'm going. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kamari goes like, oh, we're doing this, this. And she goes, yeah, yeah I'm going. Yeah, but then they bump it. They bump it behind their backs. Yeah, yeah they do. That's right. They, 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 we get the, nuts, we get the nuts. nuts. Yep. They do bump nuts. We get the nuts. So at this point, Kimari is, everybody's getting packed. We get a couple of funny scenes on that end. And um, we start to sense the, like, Thankfully, like I was saying, too, this, this show does a really good job of showing us kind of the distance that's growing in between Kimari and uh, Megu. You know, so, like, we, we get an episode strictly focused to, to, to their relationship in this particular episode. So, um, Kimari, at one point in time, can kind of sense uh, Megu's, like, I would call it, like, her being, like, her... Distance, her chakra, distance, or like hostility. her hostility, or like her. It just felt like she was very annoyed with Kimari, like whenever she would like bring up going to Antarctica. So I think that that Kimari does a pretty good job of like trying to be like, "Yo, hey, let's hang out, you know, one last time before I get to go to Antarctica." So and throughout this whole thing, they get like, I think they go to a couple of different shrines and stuff like that, and, they and go to karaoke. And then they meet up with the rest of the girls, and Meku goes to leave, and she's like, no, 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 Kimari, um, Kimari goes, no, 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 uh, Meku's coming with us. And they go to, (laughs) they they all go to um, karaoke, except for Yuzu, who at this point I think is, is... She's rehearsing, in, I think, right? She's in Tokyo. She's in, La, she's in a different city. Right, right, all together, yeah. So, um, and we get the really funny scene of, 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 uh, <laughs> uh, of karaoke, oh. and uh, Yuzu gets sent a picture <laughs> of, oh, uh, screaming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She goes, so. She goes, glad I wasn't there, and I've never glad related I wasn't there, yeah. to an anime character more. <laughs> <laughs> I like, wasn't there. Get, getting snaps from my friends and just yelling, and I'm like, "Yep, I am. I'm yep. happy. I'm not there." <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. 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 So, um, I don't know if we've been mentioning it, but they've kind of had like minor um, hiccups every now and then, because mm-hmm. like early on, there was a couple of like upperclassmen bullies trying to muscle money out of Shirase. Oh yeah, yeah. And then yeah. we had the um, we had the stuff with um, uh, that was very early. Yeah, that was like first yeah, episode. that was in like yep, it was then, in the first episode. And then we had a thing with Kamari and her mom. And then um, Meg- Megu tells her that there's a bunch of girls like talking about like oh that they they took the escort job and that's how they got the money and just spreading like bad rumors about them. And, like, it's mm-hmm. real, like, this is where, uh, again, Anthony mentioned earlier that um, that Kamari's character growth really happens in the first four episodes. Because Megu is, like, sitting there and she's telling her all this stuff. And she's like, well, you know, I'm still going to Antarctica. Mm-hmm. And she's like, aren't you afraid you'll fail? She goes, eh. Yeah, it's pretty, I'm, it's pretty solid. I think I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
your confidence is so much more than it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and I can I can one hundred percent support that. You know, thank thankfully, you know, the show does a, a great job of of really you know, showing us that the character growth that all of these girls go through, you know, and at this point, I'd say that uh, Kimari is probably this, one of the strongest leading characters at, at this point. She she knows for a fact she's getting ready to go to Antarctica. So when her and Megu are having this conversation, you know, it's kind of like this realization that, like, holy crap, this is this is probably going to be within the next couple of episodes. They're going to be standing on our, and, in Antarctica. Like, this is awesome. So... You know, and this just later plays out to the upcoming scene here, too. And this is, like, this is a very well done scene. Like, the dialogue, is. this is a very strong, strong upcoming scene. And it's Kimari getting ready to go, and, like, you get all the feels. She's at her house, and her sister's like, why didn't you wake me up? Like, ah! And she goes to leave, and standing outside her her house is um, Megu. She's like, uh, what is she? Oh gosh, I can't even remember what she exactly says. I've always loved you. <laughs> she goes, I love Amelia. Oh, yeah, yeah. got her. I, just for the watch, and then she's oh. stabbed in the back. No. Um, oh. <laughs> uh, basically, we get the, um, I don't want to call it an altercation, but a definitely intense dialogue between Megu as a character and Kimari as, as they're remembering their their friendship, you know, on extreme opposite ends where Kimari remembers all of these happy times that they shared together, like the game system, you know, and, and how smart Megu always was. And Megu remembers it as, you know, Kimari, like holding her back and like, you know, it, causing her to have more of a burden, at least on the surface. So, yeah. and they, they kind of break this down and, and I, I really, I really enjoyed this scene. I thought that this was an extremely heartfelt scene. Yeah, well, I agree. This was sorry. Go ahead. No, go go, go ahead. I was gonna slightly move on, but go oh. go say what you're saying. This I think this episode was the culmination of of kind of um, something that they were doing for like the first five episodes with like this mm-hmm. water metaphor that they kept referencing. Basically, mm-hmm. where they had like um, you know a buildup of water basically stagnates over time, and the more it builds up, the greater the release at the end and stuff, and and they relate that to. Uh, like friendship a lot in this, I think, kind of more, uh, you know, explicitly or uh, implicitly, I should say. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was really cool, right? Because basically, uh, Mayu was saying that she is actually really happy for, uh, you know, Kimari, right? That she gets to do her stuff, but she would not go with them because um, now she also has a chance to grow because mm-hmm. she won't be with. Kimari, right? She'll have a chance to grow as her own person. Mm-hmm. Um, which is really cool. It was a good. That was a really good scene. So it's a really yeah. real scene too. It's like closure they both needed, and they're mm-hmm. like, uh, like taking the time to address it and stuff. Like as friends, it's really important to yeah. their mm-hmm. characters, and it's a really real, like, relatable moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it it definitely shows that like uh, they both have kind of become dependent on, like, each other for things, and Kamari sees that as, like, as the opportunity for them to be separated to grow, and Megu sees that, like, as, like, well, this is it, this is the end of our friendship, because now you don't need, you're no longer dependent on me, but I'm still dependent on you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, like, it's showing off again how, like, the interpretation of their friendship is different from one another. Mm Mm-hmm. Very, very poignant. A very poignant scene. I, I loved how this ended as well. Like, like uh, Megu basically just says, you know what, we're not friends anymore. And, um, you know, kind of goes through what the explanation as kind of Alex has said. And Kimari, I would say that, that she shows she shows that growth. She shows the um, she shows that, that kind of taking the adult approach to it. I mean, she may only be 16 years old, but she's like, no, 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 no. This isn't the end of our friendship. This is just another step. I won't let you, you know, end our friendship just over something like this. No uh-huh. way, you know. So very, very poignant scene. I said, Jake, I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Also, uh, really quick, 
It was revealed in the scene because Megu goes like, aren't you wondering how like those girls knew about the money? Aren't you wondering how your mom knew that you forged a signature? Aren't you wondering like who's spreading those rumors? And then it's like, it's me. I don't want you to go. Yeah. And it was yeah. like, oh. Yeah. Too bad, bitch. We're going. And then the other girl shows up and she goes like, I'm going. So yeah. breakup refused. That's yeah. exactly. Breakup she... refused. Yeah, she does. She says exactly that. So um, Kimari ends up getting on the train, and it's real. It's real. They uh, they're they're going to Antarctica. I love that they get there not quickly, but in the series. You know, yeah. right. it'd have been lame if the last scene is them getting to Antarctica and you don't get to see what they do while they're there. Right. Right. And some animes would have done it that way, I think. Yeah. So I guess this is a pretty good point to talk about pacing too. We're five episodes in. What do we? How do we feel? A little slow, a little fast. I felt like the character it's development solid. Yeah, I felt that the character development was paced out so well in combination with all of the comedy. Like it, this is by far the best pacing show that that we've one of the best pacing in a in a show that we've watched in, in a very long time. I mean, it's not like like moment to moment action packed, really. Like. I mean, drama-packed, I guess, in this one, because there's no, like, action. Okay. But there is a little bit of downtime. But, I mean, it makes sense in the context of the anime, and you never go, oh, this fucking episode is dragging on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just like, okay, this is what they're doing right now. They're going to karaoke, or this is what they're doing right now. They're doing this, right? It's never mm-hmm. like... And, like, when they're doing that, they're not progressing the story. But, I mean... Um, and it's not, like, a tense moment. But it's it's, it's all right. I, I, the, pacing's, the pacing's good. I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm totally all right with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I agree. Definitely, um, like the the idea of a show of the show is that it's a whole journey. Like it's not just about Antarctica; it's the journey that you take to Antarctica. It's like it's the journey that you take to get to your destination, both like physically in their journey to Antarctica, but also as well as emotionally from like the way they start to how they are at the end of the show. And I feel like the episodes uh, are paced excellent excellently that it does feel like a journey like where Mm -hmm. all of their character growth doesn't happen in like that one episode that they get dedicated to them but it happens slowly throughout the series and Mm -hmm. come uh and hits their apex in their like specialized episodes and like that's the i felt like each episode served a purpose and had that journey mentality to it Mm -hmm. yeah i feel like the pacing was for my taste, maybe, like, a little bit slow. I was really, like, we were talking about earlier, right, looking at those opening scenes, I'm, like, ready for Antarctica shenanigans, right? <laughs> like, I have to see them fucking around, you know, having to, you know, shovel their own shit, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, hella funny, right? Um, maybe that's because I'm still a little scarred because of, like, you know, One Piece, right? Rest in peace. Like... <laughs> It took him like, <laughs> like my first anime, right? It took him like seventy. It took him seventy episodes to like get to the the first, you know, like actual destination that they were trying to get to. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like from episode one, they're like, we're going to this place. Yeah, they're like, we're like going to line. We're going to get to the ocean. Basically, is what it was. And yeah. it took him seventy episodes. And I'm like, oh, geez, you know. Hey. Um, but that's, I mean, it was still good, right? And there was a lot of character development and other cool stuff. But I did still find myself kind of, I'm like, all right, when is this? I'm like, are we going to have two episodes in Antarctica? Is it going to be one of those animes, right? Which also kind of what DJ was saying, right? But I could have just ended it with, like, them getting to Antarctica. And I'm we're glad. here. I was like, yeah. what? I would have been like, yeah, actually, oh, somehow, dude, I mean, we'll get to each the, other. Yeah. We'll get Thank to the you. episodes, but, I mean... They yeah. did a good job of making the, the few episodes about Antarctica feel like they were really, you know, like a lot of content in them mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. there were more than just a few episodes. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's divided up into into these three acts, I would say. And Act 1 is, is kind of, as Jake was saying, like the beginning of the journey. Act 2 is still en route, you know, and the, and the boiling escalation or apex of, of kind of their um, experience so far. And finally, we get our climactic end you know right right in act three and and like I, I i said previously i think that it's it's paced extremely well it was very easy for me to cl- click on that next episode so um sixth uh, we're on the sixth episode here and it is welcome to the durian show welcome to the show. <laughs> i'm like welcome, <laughs> welcome to the durian <laughs> 
<laughs> show. Welcome, welcome to the Durian Show. And uh, just a quick little blurb: if you've ever had durian, um, you either love it or you hate it. I hate it. Hate it. I've never had durian. It it's stinks gross. and it's gross. I probably hate it. It's gross. Never had so, it. I can tell you that I hate it though. All right. But anyways, the girls uh, <laughs> following their their journey, uh, they they get to Singapore and. I mean, this this episode was filled with nothing but comedy. This this episode was hilarious. Yeah, there was it's there was a whole dramatic section. I well well, I mean, nothing but comedy, Jake. Nothing, nothing but comedy. comedy. God forbid that you know that conversation they have in the bed where they both discuss their, like, their personal flaws. No comedy. Ha ha ha! Classic comedy. Okay, come on, come on. It's uh, seventy thirty is what I would call it. The girls uh, basically show up the whole time. They're they're sightseeing. They're having a blast. You know, it is becoming apparent that this looming trip to Antarctica is is it's real. It's real. They're they're just one step closer to um, to getting to to Antarctica. So they start trying all this different durian fruit. Um, well, they, she, they eat the ice cream. Yeah, they eat the ice cream. Yeah, Kimari eats the ice cream first, and she's like... <laughs> uh, I, I do like that they go up to the vendor, and they go, yeah. they go discount, please, in their English. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me mention that, because that's the thing I wrote down for this episode. <laughs> discount, <laughs> please. Yeah. Discount, yeah. please. <laughs> it's like, oh my yeah. god. It's, so it's classic. It's classic. When they're on the airplane, and they're in... Um, uh, Shiroshi, or whatever her name is, is crying over like watching March of the Penguins. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fucking sad movie, though. Dude, I know, but it's so funny. It is like, so funny. She always breaks out about like the penguins and stuff. And uh-huh. It's good. It's good. Yeah, it's a really it. funny episode. But isn't this the same one where uh, Hanada loses her passport? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Surprise a operation. Or a lot of character development, you know. Yeah. yeah. Which is, that's a relatable fucking feeling, right? Oh, that's terrifying. amen to that. Jeez. You know, if you've I ever traveled with I episode where um, Hanada wrote uh, the other girl's name wrong on the tickets, and then they, <laughs> Hanada thinks he's not going to be able to make it into the country. Because, Mike. That's a reference everyone knows. <laughs> oh. We're not going to talk about that. We'll talk about that on, on Anime Dumpster Dive's Christmas special. Behind the uh, story, yeah. Behind the Alex, <laughs> see if on the see if on the speed share you can find the... that. Dick, that's hilarious. <laughs> anime, what? <laughs> it's uh, our our podcast where we don't talk about anime. Uh, be- behind the dumpster. <laughs> behind the dumpster, where we talk about that guy that raped that girl. Behind a dumpster. Oh, oh right. no! That's now not that what we're talking about. Uh, okay, now yeah, that that's gonna cut. Cut. Uh, Alex, see if you can find um, the 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 picture I was talking about with the the little pee pee train machine. Okay. Here, anyways, I make a note. Uh, Wait, hold on. No, no. I got I got to get a clean cut. So. Yeah, it? and I really like this episode because losing your passport is like such a you know a relatable thing. Everybody's always worried about that. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'd I'd say that um, you know traveling with your passport, you know, just making sure that you don't you don't lose it. I can sympathize. I can sympathize for this. Yeah, so nothing. Um, was, uh, <laughs> and so, anyways, the girl, <laughs> the girls uh, get back to their room, and they have since <laughs> separated. At this point, too, we find out that that Kimari is not a uh, you know I'm jumping all the way back to episode four. Kimari's not not very awesome to sleep sleep next to. She rolls all over the bed. So when you find out that Yuzu has to sleep in the same bed as Kimari, Yuzu is so disappointed. She's like, "Oh no!" I like that she goes like, "Can I just sleep on the floor? That's where I'll end up anyway." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Um, but as Hinata's getting ready to go to sleep, um, she's looking through her bag, and surprise, she's lost her she's lost her passport. So, and that's where we get this really heartfelt scene of um, Shiraze kind of thinking out loud and making sure that that uh, everybody's going to get to go, but still keeping that kind of that that, that stoic type of type of look to her so but then we later dive into that and we find out that it's it's much much deeper than that it it, it goes much further so and i really liked that about 
about Shirase's character, this is where we start to see kind of that growth. So this this oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, well from like from the very beginning we know her main goal is to go to Antarctica. And mm-hmm. this uh this introduction of her losing uh Hinata losing her passport mm-hmm. is kinda like the, uh it's they're like, oh well we'll just like we can get her a new passport, we'll change her flight and we'll show up uh we'll show up two days we'll show up like a day later. And then they go, and then that's where Shiraze goes, well, will we make it to Antarctica still? Because if we show up a day later, like, yeah, we'll make the boat, but will they want us to go? Maybe they'll be like, oh, you guys can't even handle flying here. How are you supposed to make it to Antarctica? Right, right. And so that's where, um, like, like you kind of have this idea that Shirazai doesn't, like, Shirazai is putting Antarctica ahead of Hinata coming. <laughs> and so... That's that's where like I felt like we're kind of set up for um, for this like we're set up to think that Shirase will always put Antarctica above everything else, and then I that's why I really like her um, like this this reveal of her caring about her like her friends as much as she cares about the trip because it's no longer <laughs> oh I want to go to Antarctica it's me and my friends are going to Antarctica. Mm-hmm. No, no separation, uh-huh. you know, at all. And where Hinata's like, you know, I'm totally fine with being on my own. I don't need anybody to care for me. Blah 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 blah. It and, doesn't and... like people f- being fake with her, right? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's her biggest thing. Yeah. So, and thankfully, within the next scene, I think it happens within the next scene. Like they go to the, they go to the airport like right in the morning, and it's like we're gonna try and change our flights. And <laughs> Yuzu goes up, has a very polite conversation with the lady, and she comes back and she goes, well, they just they can't do it. This is, like, the only time. And, and Shirase is not having it. She walks up and she starts, like, screaming at this lady. Oh, she says, she says uh, ticket air to two days. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Or yeah. four? It was like, what? In English, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, like, oh my god. And there were the person behind the counter was like, No. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. And then so. she offers the one million yen. Yep. Yep. And it turns out the only way to get there is first class. So she's flying first class. Two days later, they're gonna make it happen. So sweet. Then they, what do they do after that? They do they go out to eat? They go out to eat and Shiraze goes to pay and inside her purse <laughs> is the missing is, passport. Is the missing passport. And she has that moment of like, Oh no, what have I done? <laughs> and she has a lot of those moments throughout yeah. the show. Yeah. Like she like is supposed to be like the perfect one, but she like totally accidentally fucks things up and like yeah. tries to play it off. Like I dig yeah. it. I dig like, it. She's cool. It's funny. Yeah. Oh yeah. So uh <laughs> the the um oh gosh, what is the word? The punishment for acting so stubborn is that either Hinata or Shirase have to eat a piece of the durian fruit. They have to eat Uh-oh. they each have to eat half a durian. Because oh. they get a durian and they cut it into fourths, and then yeah. the other two girls go, No, you're eating you're eating two pieces each. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's gross. Durian is is gross. They also get their the new tickets refunded, so she gets her one million yen back. Woo! So uh, <laughs> thankfully, like I said, this show is is not at the lack of any drama or any conflict, you know, and it's not at the detriment of the story. You know, that's something that I really like to bring up. It's not something that's like too cheesy, you know, in that sense. This this is like th- those are real world you know, relatable issues that come up when you're traveling. And that's, that to me was, was very telling of how the, how the writers decided to put that into the show. I I really, really like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, that being said, we move into episode seven and that is where they arrive in Fremantle uh, in, in order to board the ship, which is aptly named the uh, Kishin, no. It's the penguin something. Yeah. It is the penguin. The I was going to say penguin like, I think it's like penguin Maru. Oh, yeah. That sounds right. Yeah. So, <laughs> the you know, Mar- Maru ship. is like a ship. That's what they name all yeah. their ships in Japan. Like mm-hmm. the Nihon Maru and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I love 
they're all penguin themed. The whole expedition, their hats just got a penguin on them, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, I love their their posters, like the the little logo that they have for them, yeah. where it's the expedition to Antarctica. Whatever, with, like, the penguin popping out of the side and stuff. It's funny. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So when we get we get some really um, some really emotional scenes on on this particular uh, episode as well. And this is a very be- this is a very pretty episode because they they begin to set sail from Fremantle. The girls get all unpacked and they get shown around around the rest of the ship. Um, you kind of get an idea of what their job is going to be, and and this is also where we get. <laughs> Get to learn that Shirase is horrible behind a camera. Oh yeah. So they're trying. <laughs> they're trying to re- in front of a camera. Yep. So they're trying to record all of these info, <laughs> like infographic, like uh, you know, little blurbs for Yuzu's experience while she goes on to uh, her trip or exploration. She um, jump. And she can't well, we, jump. <laughs> we already knew she was bad when the mom asked if she could do it. Yeah. She was yeah. worst. Very true, very true. So, um, continuing that theme, she is absolutely horrible when they're... They give her a script, she just reads it really quickly. Exactly, exactly. Zero emotion. She was perfect in this. And then we later find out, too, in this episode, that when the girls are getting set up, that this is uh, where uh, Takako, uh, Shirase's mom, uh, once stayed as well. Yeah, and uh, because it's the same ship that they took three years ago in the mm-hmm. expedition where Takako disappeared. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So uh, they get ready to a- embark, and the girls uh, later find a little piece of Takako in the uh, sense that her mom had painted a, a glow-in-the-dark Milky Way underneath one of the bunks. So, I was going to say, you need to... Explain that pretty quick, Anthony. Uh, they found a little piece of Takako, and then you paused for too long. <laughs> they right? found her frozen hand. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, what did they find, Anthony? Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's a little bit here that I, I audibly laughed at, and that's when yeah. they're um, – because we, we kind of get introduced to, like, four minor characters a little bit, because mm-hmm. they're, like, the only characters with details. Like, five minor characters, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, – and there's a joke when she's introducing the high school girls. She's like, these are the high school girls that we're taking. And she goes, to the males, they're underaged. Yeah. <laughs> they're not legal. They're, they're not, not legal. legal. Yeah. Not legal. <laughs> and, then she, and everyone's cheering. And she goes, they're not legal. I said they're not legal. <laughs> and she like singles that one guy out. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Yep. <laughs> it's classic. Um, so we have a lot of, of uh, I mean, this is, this, I, I guess, would be the only slow episode, I, I would say. It, you know, um, because, go ahead. I was going to, I was just going to kind of support that just by saying, because they, we have like a very, it's like a very strange, like, shopping scene that's kind of thrown in there, and then there, I think, this isn't the potato peeling episode, no, that's right? The ne- uh, that's the next the episode. Next. So, like I said, this this one I would say is probably the only slow episode. So I would say that I was too excited. Too excited. I was too excited. Yeah, I just wanted it to happen. I was too excited. I would say that it it is slow, but it still serves its purpose because we get a um, we get a bit of backstory about the first trip and how like it was more funded because they're constantly talking about how. Um, three years ago, they they needed a boat this big for all the people, and now like the boat's too big, and now all the rations that they're getting are really small, mm-hmm. like compared to last time, and how uh, like basically they're strapped for cash. Right, right, and the determination is is definitely apparent as well. Uh-huh. It's like you know, I I we are we are absolutely going to Antarctica. This is going to happen. So. Mm-hmm. That one girl's uh, boyfriend's not texting her back. No, that oh, one girl's yeah, boyfriend's yeah. breaking up with her. <laughs> That's what it is, yeah. That's what it is. So, and the girls kind of get have a moment of, um, you know, I guess I wouldn't say that they have, like, a moment of doubt, you know, almost, too, where they start investigating, you know, like, how how short every everyone is on rations or are on, 
you know the their their own ability to go so um but it's it's later kind of quelmed again by by Kanai because they uh you know they're they're going uh-huh. but okay uh they set sail and we're right on to episode 8 which is howling maddening uh, scr- is it screeching? Screaming. Shoot. Screaming. Are you no, translating no. these as you read them, Anthony? I'm sorry, I can't, I can't <laughs> see the first of it. It like cuts off. It like cuts off half of them, so I have to like guess a little later. <laughs> later half. Anyways, so this is this is this is one of my favorite episodes. I think this is probably my favorite episode. Is it because of all the throwing up? It's just so funny. It's, it's pretty funny. It's, it is so funny. So we get. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we get the girls, and um, at this point, they're supposed to all be assigned jobs, and they you find out that they have a very strict schedule that they need to follow as well. And if they don't, then they just take more time from other people. And um, <laughs> they all have to go out and exercise as well. And there's like a scheduled exercise time that the girls need to make sure and, uh, you know, follow strictly. So as they start peeling potatoes, you learn that these girls, mm-hmm. yeah, they don't have, they don't have any, any experience at all. Yeah. I like that part with the, with the potato peelers. Yeah. She was like, well, I wish I'd brought that fucking f- potato peeler <laughs> that everyone told me to leave at home. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. like, it depends, because this is, like, a big thing in Japan, I've heard, is, like, you know, they say, like, when somebody's talking about you, then that person, like, sneezes, or whatever, yeah. or, like, what was the scene of her sister, and she, like, sneezes as she's, like, peeling potatoes or something back but at home. But it's, like, home. a violent sneeze, like, oh, yeah, my God. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> pretty funny. That is pretty funny. So, uh... <laughs> I like the, uh, the, I don't know, I, just, I guess I just like a lot of running humor. Yeah. So, when yeah. they're doing the running around the boat... And, uh, and, um, uh, Kimari, Kimari just takes off running. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like she's going to get tired real quick. Running humor? I thought you were talking about like, like running jokes. No, no. Like, like actual physical running. Phys- yeah. Physical running. Okay. Yeah, that's I, I ran yeah. in high school. So I just like <laughs> oh, seeing like the yeah. mistakes a lot of like, uh, beginners make. And so she just takes off running right away and they go, and uh. again, Again, the bits and pieces, the tidbits <laughs> that Hinata says, hinting at, like, her past, is, mm-hmm. she's like, oh, well, she's going to get tired. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then they catch her, and then she's like, yeah. she's like, why is the, why is the boat so big? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I said, it was, a, it was a funny episode. So, and then we hear about this terrible longitude, lat- latitudes, I think it's the latitude, right? They're latitudes, yeah. Yeah, they're latitudes, where... I don't know. I don't. I was going to ask you, Alex. I guess um, you know. Do you is, is this something you're familiar with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they kind of explain it in the episode too, right? Yeah. Um, because at those those pretty far south ap- uh, latitudes, close to Antarctica, right? There's no continents to right. block these really violent, you know, currents and stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. It just has free reign to just you know spiral and spiral and go as fast as they can, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why. You get really crazy waves and stuff when you get close to, and like wind and everything as you get close to Antarctica. Pretty rocky seas. Yeah. So, and with rocky seas come the uh, <laughs> uh, the stomach churning, and so the girls have a really tough time. And you find out that they've only taken one Dramamine tablet. Yeah, they've taken one seasick <laughs> pill. Yeah. Thinking it would last the whole trip. Well, yeah, yeah. So uh, they are sick the whole whole next couple of. I would say, I want to think that this is probably like a week that they spent. Right? Does it go through time? I think it's it's, it's at least a couple of days that yeah. they spend just bedridden, where the they they can barely even do their job. They they can't hold down any food at all. This this episode actually made me a little sick because the entire time they're sick. The boat's rocking back and forth. Like, the scenes are rocking back and forth, and I'm like, ugh. Yeah. You get it. You get it. Um, so... <laughs> it's an it, immersive experience. Yeah. Exactly! That, well, that's a great way to put it. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. I, I didn't really get that as much. I don't know. 
Um, I don't. I don't think I got as much like seasick as uh, more. More so was I just genuinely entertained with this episode. I thought it was hilarious. So I do really like the scene at the end where they kind of overcome their sickness and go yeah. outside to see the waves. I thought that was just a really well done scene. Like just like yeah. the the wave coming in the air and them going yeah. like, yeah. is it is it raining? Because like they're getting hit <laughs> with so much yeah. like moisture. And I'm like, oh. yeah, yeah. Anyone yeah. ever watch Deadliest Catch? Yeah. That's all I could yeah, think yeah. about. I'm like, these girls' lives are in danger right oh, now. Absolutely, you know? their lives are in danger. Oh, Should have been out. No, no. Be on life vest. Oh, no. yeah. oh this seriously, is, this is crazy shit. You know, these girls don't know what they're into right now. No, that's the truth. So, uh, there, <laughs> I, I did forget to mention this. Like the the whole running gag of of uh, Shiraze not being able to perform. Uh, in front of a camera. This episode has the beginning where she sticks the microphone in, into people's faces. I I loved that part. That was so funny. That was it was. Uh, <laughs> she's like, Yuzu's like trying to give her the cue to like take away the microphone, and she's like, she's like, what? I don't. I don't care. Shoving it further. <laughs> How do you feel thing? about Antarctica? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. classic classic so uh but anyways yeah as jay kind of mentioned the girls get over their fear and they step outside and they see this great big ocean that's turning and churning and and it is extremely dangerous kids please don't ever do that it's ridiculous um they have yeah they have a little uh little bit of uh relief as well as they start to you know, fall into a nice rhythm upon the ship. They kind of show that at the at the end. We get a little exposition there, so and I, I like that quite a bit. Yeah. Oh, here's this scene right here. Yeah, about the current. Um, there was a really cool scene at the end of this one too. That was like, uh, they basically compared the you know the vastness of that part of the world of you know that's literally thousands of miles of of just ocean right there's no land for thousands mm-hmm. of miles right right and that's right. part of the reason why the currents get so bad. But they compare it to outer space just because it's, like, so vast. It's almost unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And I think that was, like, the point when I'm like, yeah, I'll probably go to Antarctica sometime. I'll probably do it. Amen. No. Amen to that. Anime, it, uh, that would be sick. It, it inspired you? Huh? It did. Yeah. Yeah. It inspired me, that's for sure. DJ, like, I hope you know <laughs> now our friendship with Anthony has become a time bomb. Until <laughs> Anthony comes up to oh, us yeah. and goes, I bought us tickets to Antarctica. And we go... Hey. We're not going. <laughs> and he break up. I'm packed. Break up to die. Yeah. No, I'm dude. I'm I'm in. Like, I dude. This anime seriously inspired me. I'm like, this is pretty cool. I would do something like this. I, I will yeah. say, it did make me go. Like, I I do need to take a trip. Like, yeah. Uh, I I yeah. To, not, to not, that. not necessarily to Antarctica. But just and nope, general. you already said it. Nope, you already said it. No. I'm not going to Anthony. Yeah, today we're going. I already sent Anthony the link for the uh, the Trivago. You know, take it. <laughs> we're yeah, both trying to go to fucking Barcelona. It's Barcelona. gonna be authentic too. We, we're going on a Japanese fish tanker. It's not <laughs> oh, even an icebreaker, but I mean, a... we'll, we'll make it work. Yeah, we'll make it work. All right. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. Now we're on to episode nine, which is Antarctic Love Story. Woo! So, <laughs> we find out that one of the expedition members, uh, which is he is a supporting cast member uh, by the name of Toshio. Toshio. The guy that got this, called out. Yeah, yeah yep. he got called out. And you find out that he has a, a, a kind of obsession with uh, Jin. Uh, the El, El Capitan. Um, during this episode as well, and who else, uh, who better to give him an adult, uh, advice on how to woo an adult woman than to go to high school girls? (laughs) Not only is he trying to woo another adult, he's trying to woo an older adult. He's not trying to woo a high school girl. No. It's like, it's a 20-year-old asking a 16-year-old how to woo a 35-year-old. Right, right. <laughs> like, like, the logic, not there. Not there. So, I don't know, um, stickers, uh, candy? 
<laughs> so the girls, the girls, and his idea is that he needs to ask uh, Shirase. So, and thankfully, we get a little bit of character growth kind of wrapped into this episode as well, where we kind of get a little glimpse into Takako and um, Jin's kind of uh, background, where we kind of find out that they they were uh, really good Lovers. friends and they were they were really close. I don't think so. I was just throwing it in your paws because you paused. I don't, I don't, I don't think, they're think lovers. so. I don't think they were lovers. I think they were just genuinely close friends. Well, I mean, maybe, maybe. You know, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not, uh, we're not ruling it out, you know. DJ ships them, Anthony. I don't like DJ don't ships them. them. You're right. You're right. You're That's right. my ship. They're the okay. ones you're paying. <laughs> uh, yep. The uh, one uh, thing I like in this one is that um, in the in the flashbacks, Jen kind of calls out Takako. She goes, mm-hmm. you keep finding excuses to leave me alone with your kid. And yeah. like, Takako's like, I just want you guys to get along. <laughs> 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 yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, that's, I guess that's, it's pretty relatable. It's not something you normally see, like, in a right. relationship. It, it's normally, like, a person who's in a relationship wanting people to get along with, like, their friends, like, type of mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. But it's like, well, she's my kid, and you're, like, my best friend. I kind of want you guys just to, just to like just each other. I want you to be your stepmom. <laughs> So we get kind of that glimpse into their into their background, and this this episode opens up with the girls trying to uh, jump rope, and Shirase is is like excellent at jumping rope, and that's how they kind of tie in, you know, kind of the background here. So um, thankfully, we get little snippets of of that backstory. So mm-hmm. the girls come up with an elaborate plan to interview. The captain. They say, you know what? I've got a great idea. We'll sit down with the captain and... We'll ask her everything she likes. Exactly. And tell exactly. her. Yep. What's her type, you know? Yep. And the girls come up with a plan that Shirase has to be the one to ask her. And Shirase's not having it. She just doesn't want to do that. So, but they oh, go... Hold on, really quick. Because Shirase goes, uh, like, yeah, um, like, because they're like, you knew each other for a long time. She goes, yeah, but we're not necessarily, like, that close. And it shows, like, one where Shirazi is a very little kid, and she just puts blocks on the table, and she goes, here's your change. And she goes, what? She goes, here's your change. And Jin just looks at her and goes, you shouldn't give money to strangers. I just yeah. like deadpan humor of an adult treating, like, a small child <laughs> as another adult. <laughs> It is kind of telling of of uh, Jin's character as well. I, I think uh-huh. that that's that is funny. So, uh, but this show does not lack in its dramatic, you know, um, kind of effects here because you you really do get a glimpse of how close Jin and, and Takako were in this in this particular episode. So, uh, the girls go through and interview um, Jin, and they are surprised to see that Shirase is not with them. So she blatantly asks, "Oh, sh- sh- where is where is Shirase?" And and the girls go, "Oh, she had something else to do." And she Kanai hates- and Jin, they they know, they know. So uh, the the uh, thought comes from Jin to kind of approach uh, Shirase, and they kind of have a, a little heart to heart, you know, about about it. They start the conversation. So. Um, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, and uh, to tie it back to your uh, to you mentioning the jump rope mm-hmm. in the uh, in the flashback, we actually find out the reason why Shirazi is so good at jump roping is that when she was a kid, like she kind of messed up and she was like gonna give up, and Jen told her like, "Hey, you know, um, like the first trip to Antarctica wasn't successful. Its first shot, like they mm-hmm. failed, and then they had to keep to going, and so this is where Shirazi kind of develops this." Um, this no fear attitude towards failure is because of Jim. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nice little backstory. I loved. I loved uh, this episode. This was very good. And they also uh, land on Antarctica. Yeah, this is it. This is it. And they yell, they, they all they, shout in your face, Ashley, yep. which is one of my yep. favorite in scenes. In your face. Yep. They get down. They take the first step, and the they. Sh- <laughs> it comes. It's so unwarranted. Too. Like I, I didn't think that Shirase was going to say that. I thought she was just going to be like, "I'm here." No, it, it turned out to be, "You guys, I you guys all doubted me. Screw you." <laughs> yeah, I like that too because they land and they go like, "How do you feel?" And she goes, "In your face." She's like, "What?" <laughs> in your face. She's in your face. 
Everyone said I couldn't be here. Well, guess what? I'm here in your face. And then everyone on the boat starts shouting at yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Classic. That was a classic episode. So, um, so and then uh, they to to tie up the love story. They tell Toshio basically she's not interested, and yeah. he kind of goes, "Oh, yeah." <laughs> he's like in the he's like in the mess hall with um, Yumiko, the chef. And she's like, you know, maybe you were just looking at the at the wrong person. And he's drunk at this point, and he he's like, <laughs> like spits out some of his his beer. He's like, you Yumiko, I didn't know, I didn't know you were you you were into me. Like, oh my god, I love you. <laughs> she's like, what? No, not me. <laughs> it's classic, classic. So we roll right into episode ten, and episode ten is called. Partial friendship. Partial friendship. So thankfully, we're kind of explain. We we're given the explanation of uh, what the icebreaker actually does. So you know, it 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 breaks ice, baby. In the most literal form, it it breaks ice, and they still have a while to go until they get to um, the base of which they were they will be staying. So thankfully, uh, that goes by fairly quickly, and. They get to the station called So Sayowa Station, uh, which hasn't seen anybody for the last three years. So they go through and they unload all of their gear, and the girls take take part and help out. It's a very cute, cute scene. It's it, it's hilarious. This was this was also very very funny. So. As they all get settled in, uh, you find out that each of the girls will be able to have their own room, which is awesome have because that, that's where they <laughs> that's where they reveal that. Uh, and we've already kind of known this that uh, Kimari is a restless sleeper. Oh, and she sleeps with her eyes open. <laughs> yeah, she she apparently sleeps with her eyes open, and she also <laughs> talks sleeps. Under, oh, she also, I wrote down what she said, dude. What, what she did said? she say? Uh, she said she opens her eyes, emergency, right? And and the, <laughs> they're all like, "What?" I was like, "What the fuck?" And she's like, "The jar genie won't come out of the toilet." <laughs> it's like, what? I like how she asks, like, uh, y- y- Yuzuki. She's like, "What does that mean?" And she goes, "Why yeah. would I know?" <laughs> yeah, she's like, "What is a jar genie?" That's what she said. Yeah. She's like, "What well, you said it?" Yeah, yeah. So this is <laughs> like again, very classic, you know. And this is. This, I would say, Alex, I think that you had, you know, this is where I was really like, I want to go to Antarctica. Like, holy crap, do I want to go to Antarctica? Because you got to live in a dorm, Anthony? Go go to somewhere no, else. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, is that why? Yeah. I have sh- I have stayed That's in my fair thing. share of, of uh, hostels, okay? I don't, I don't ever want to sleep next to Thor, God of Thunder, ever again. No, thank you. Um, snoring. Which is bad. <laughs> we actually discovered the reasoning behind it, and I stopped it for the rest of the trip. The, the really thing that ruined Anthony's uh, love for all things travel was when they turned up the uh, heater, and he nearly died. I was going to die. Uh, <laughs> so right. what convinced you, Anthony? What was it? Well, I would say that that it is just the the these vast open spaces like this is where i would say too that the animation really shows what it's all about like we we kind of talked about this earlier but this is like regardless that they are just wide open plains of just snow and mountains still this is a very beautiful beautiful scene and i would like to go to antarctica strictly for that that it is just vast wide open and it is in reality a place Kind of farther than the universe because of how you know, kind of far they've had to travel. Yeah, you know, like at this space. point as well. You know, so vast I, open. Oh, go ahead. I was, say, I was just going to say I kind of had like the opposite because I I'm still not <laughs> sold in Antarctica at all. It didn't. It kind of made it more appealing. Yeah. But like when in training camp where they go, oh well, we have to set up a, a white uh, this like orange flag every so often just so we figure out where we are because everything's so vast and the same color that it's super easy to get lost. And I went, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's old Jake on not ever. Yeah, he said, I never want to go. 
That's hilarious. Gotta look danger in the face, baby, and laugh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's no danger right now. <laughs> I, I will yeah. laugh out of like utter fear if I went to Antarctica and I walked somewhere and I looked around and there were no orange flags and everything was just white and I'd just be like, ah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then I froze to death. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> While laughing like that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is also to we get our first introduction to the notorious Pangu. Oh yeah! Oh, dude, they're so freaking good. out. They're both Jin and um, <laughs> Shirase have a little <laughs> mini freak out about the Pangus. And you gotta I, stay far away. You gotta stay yeah. five meters. <laughs> far out. They, they have a they have a, a little <laughs> boundary that they're supposed to not cross. Just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think in this episode too, one of them starts like walking towards Chirase and yeah, she's she like, to what, do do? what do I do? What do I do? That's that was hilarious. That was super fun. They had like drag her away from yeah, that yeah. stuff. Was- so a life, life inside of the dorms uh, kind of begins, you know, and, and I'd say that this is like the realization that this is no vacation. This isn't just a, this isn't just a, a trip, you know, to, to, uh, a, a little vacation spot. No, you're going to be working while you're here. That was awesome. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They had to celebrate it's Christmas. Yeah, mm-hmm. not fancy Merry, fucking... Merry Christmas. Yeah, this is the Christmas. <laughs> this is also yeah. Yuzu's up. This is like the, the apex of Yuzu's storyline. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I loved this, this episode. This was, uh, like we said, I mean, here on the Anime Dumpster Dive podcast, we love the character growth, you know. And thankfully, this shows that. this show is uh, <laughs> okay. I hate character growth. You guys like, I want a character that's same point A point B. So thankfully, um, you know, we get we get an episode that's directly related to uh, Yuzu and and her growth, and that kind of realization that she has never spent a Christmas and or a birthday. Uh, with friends, so she really starts to have that kind of introflection about, like, well, I've never had friends. What really makes a friend a friend? You know, and we get a very heartwarming kind of scene here. She's where... like a robot. She's like, "What is friendship? <laughs> Tell me, please. <laughs> what is <laughs> friends? What do you mean, friend? love? You guys should watch Violet Evergarden. Holy shit! <laughs> He's a robot. That's the whole the whole twelve episodes about man. It's crazy. What is <laughs> friends? Love. What is friends <laughs> so um one thing i liked in this episode is that when they're delivering cake to the workers one mm-hmm. of the workers just starts playing one of yuzu's songs on, like, the <laughs> oh my and he God, looks dude. back at her he looks back yeah. at her. and so this I, this didn't click with me until the end where they show her the birthday cake but i think mm-hmm. that was him showing that he knew it was her birthday Ooh, I didn't think about that. I thought that he was just like, I totally love you. <laughs> I think it was like, because he, like, he plays it and he looks back at her. Like, yeah. he's like, yeah, I know. Because I'm a super fan. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I he, dig that. He I dig is that. a super fan. He comes back, right? I he dig comes that. Back. Stuff. That theory. So this is, this, I would say, is one of the stronger episodes of the series. Not to say that any of the other episodes are weak. This oh, is yeah. just one of the stronger Dude, they, episodes. They packed a ton of content into yep. this episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is kind of what we were talking about earlier, too, that, that they do a really good job, at least the writers and the animators do a great job, of, of again, packing these scenes where they are on Antarctica full of... of of story, plot, and content, where I'm not, where it's not like lacking, you know, from from the other, uh, from the other episodes. So, so begins Act Three, um, with the commencement of Episode Ten. So, thankfully, we get the resolution between Shirase and um, no, I guess I guess it was Kimari, right? Kimari was kind of the main point of contention. Yeah with Yuzu, where Yuzu is kind of having this hard time grasping what friendship is really all about. Yeah, she makes the and, contract. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and she makes the contract, and, and Kimari's like, well, that's she, not she what friendship is. Guy. Right, friendship is just, friendship is a four, is a two-letter word, right? It's ne. It's not. It's ne. Oh, it's, it's that's, that's what it is. It's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it, yeah, it's like, that's adapted off of, uh, like, so desne, which is like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's right, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I assume it's, like, has pretty much the same meaning just in slang, right? Right. right. And like, I would say yeah, that... I agree, that's right. Right, uh-huh. right. And it's kind of like that unspoken, like, friendship is unspoken, it's trust. That's what friendship is. 
you know, yeah. and they kind of demonstrate that in this in this episode. So mm-hmm. I like that. It was uh, like I said, you don't really like those undertones. I, I really I really dig that. Yeah, dude. Hell cute. I'm going to start texting that to everybody, you know. <laughs> I'm going to send it to you guys right now, bro. You better. You better. I'm going to be waiting for your text. So we move on to episode family. Uh, Episode 11. Which oh, I, I personally believe is, the, yep, yeah. is the second strongest episode of the entire show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this is uh, Bash the Drum Can. So, and this Bash is... Bash <laughs> Drum Can. <laughs> banging on a street light. So, how does this how does this episode starts? Because, I, like, I remember the biggest, like, I remember the main points. How does this episode start They're again? Trying to, uh, aren't they getting ready to do the video calls? They're working outside, right? And this is where we get the glimpse of of yeah, Kim Barley uh, walking up, and she's got the <laughs> she's got oh yeah she's got the <laughs> Yeah, they're yeah. playing around with. She's got a mask on to start because well, they're, they're doing the around calls with their families. Remember? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and they, this, this is the first part. Off the mask, yeah. and she's got the sunburn. Yeah. yeah. And, she, <laughs> and later she's talking to her family, and they make yeah. fun of her sunburn. Well, yeah. This, this is one of my favorite parts because it's so true. Uh, is yeah. when they're sitting there and they go, uh, they're practicing for the broadcast, and uh, Shiraze and Hanada just can't stop laughing at her, and Yuzuki yeah. goes, "Hey." Don't laugh at her. It's not that funny. And she starts breaking out in laughter. And, <laughs> yeah, Kam- yeah. and Kamari looks at her and she goes, that hurts more. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, that does- that one always hurts more. When yeah. the person trying to defend you can't. Starts laughing. Yeah. 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 That was classic. It's a, it's a classic start to an episode. Hilarious. Like I said, the show is very, it's, it's filled with lots of comedy. I love it. So they, they begin the video call and uh, Kimari's mom and sister are on and she gets super embarrassed even further. And shortly thereafter, um, I think, I think Yuzu's mom is on, but directly after that, um, we get introduced to three, characters that just pop up onto the screen and they're introduced as friends right and they're introduced as Hinata's friends and Hinata has like kind of this mini freak out um she kind of covers the covers the camera and then runs off so we get kind of like this mysterious like whoa what the heck is going on um and you know what, Jake? I, I would I would argue my own point. I would I think that this episode is stronger than than episode ten. Oh fuck! I was gonna say episode twelve was the strongest episode. You think so? A place further That's than the, the universe. Yes. I would say, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I, they're I, all strong. I, I, equally the, strong. These three I episodes would... are the strongest in the series. Ten, eleven, and twelve. Ten, eleven, twelve. But also in that order. I. Ooh. I think mm-hmm. I think I it agree. goes ten, no, eleven, and twelve. Okay, I agree okay. with Jake, but I also agree with Anthony. Unanimous, unanimous. Right. I agree. Okay, so um, directly after she kind of runs off, we kind of get this uh, kind of temper tantrum that Hinata kind of throws, and it kind of just throws the whole whole kind of group for a loop, you know? She um, snow. She's like, yeah, she like snow. She, she, she like has to run outside. She snow. Like, follows her outside, and she like has this freak out, and she's like. Well, I forget what she's saying. Something along the lines of, like, it's basically yeah. like, get out, screw you, yeah. or, like, why yeah. are you showing up and stuff. And it makes right. you think, right. like, she's gets tired of snow. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh, very ext- extremely interesting. And she is, ex- uh, Hinata, as we've learned previously, is extremely good at uh, hiding her emotions and uh, kind of downplaying any any hardship that she's going through to try and uh, kind of just move past and kind of um, push that under the, under the, under the sheet, you know, so that you can keep moving full forward. Um, but Shirase sees through that kind of facade and she kind of continues to try and delve a little deeper. And that's when um, I think all of the girls do make it, make an effort, right. To, to like figure out what the heck's going yeah. on. So, and she, Hinata, kind of eventually breaks down, and she tells them... No, she gets her... Oh, no, no, that's right. Red. That's right. She gets sent an email, and Shirase happens to hear that she has an email, 
And curiosity kind of gets the better of her, and she clicks through and reads, I think, like half of it or something like that, enough to kind of figure out what the heck's going on. Mm-hmm. And boom, the drama, man, the drama in this episode is... is drama. Ooh, piss off, dude, piss yeah. off. That's what it is, yeah. 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 So, um, all of the girls kind of confront Hinata about the this email, and Hinata kind of tells this story about how she didn't just leave on her own accord. You know, she had a very good reason. She was on the track team, and she was exceptionally good at at her events. And they were be, being called to the varsity. T- is it varsity team? Is that kind of what what it was? Yeah. I thought it was senior team. I think is I, what they said. I thought she got invited. I thought it was to a specific meet. Might be a specific meet. So, and all of the seniors, as some girls kind of talked to Hinata about. I mean, because it was going to be their last season ever. You know, some of the underclassmen, you know, would probably do better to just let them, let them go. Mm-hmm. You know, in their place. So when Hanada is called out by their coach and. He says, we want you to go. She accepts. And no one cheers for her. No one cheers for her. And that's when you later find out that Hinata kind of heard these same three girls um, kind of talking to one of the other seniors that didn't get called because Hinata took her place. That, you know, she 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 says a bunch of nasty things about her, well, you know, and, and like, yeah, I like call her a loser and mm-hmm. say, why did she get it? Like, I didn't- Tell her to not do it or whatever. Right. Yeah, they like they kind of shit because they told her to try her hardest. Right. And then when they got confronted about it, they were like, "Oh no, no, we didn't." Uh, yeah. We told her to. We told her to throw the throw the rock. She didn't. Consider. They said mm-hmm. we told her to be more considerate. Right. Right. Yeah. right. Uh, and at uh, that point, Hinata was standing outside, so she heard that whole conversation, and that's why she dropped out of. Um, Ew. Out, out of school, so because of you know, well, like putting they start it, spreading more rumors about her. That's right. That's right. They spread a bunch of nasty rumors about her. She so it. She's a whore. I don't know if any of that's true. Yeah, something to that but, effect. I'm assuming. I don't sure. know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> anyway. Right. Um, so in between that, you kind of learn that this this just infuriates. Shiraze. And she, she brushes it off. She tells the whole yeah. story and she's like, yeah, but it was no big deal. You know, I'm right. over it now. Right. And then Shiraze, Shiraze interrupts her. Yeah. yeah. And she goes, no, no, it's not. That's not a big deal. That's that's not just it's not a big deal. This is a very big deal. So it's not nothing. Yeah, it's not nothing. It's not nothing. Mm-hmm. So yeah. specifically, Let's they move. Kill him. And then they're like, <laughs> what? She's like, um, hey, maybe not kill him. What? They okay. So in this episode, they also go out to um, an encampment where, right? This is this is where they have like the gas can thing. You mean the oh, with drum the water the, with the water? Yeah, yeah the water. Yeah. Right, where uh, they're filling up the gas can out. out yeah, yeah. They take this helicopter ride. It's really pretty. Yeah, they do the and solar panels. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So. They're camping out here, and that's when Shirase and Hanada have this really heartfelt conversation that's like, you know, you're basically summarizing very poorly. Like, you are my friend. I care about you. You know, if these people are bullying you, that's wrong. You know, and, and they don't they don't matter. We can just continue moving moving forward. But, you know, they shouldn't have, have this power that they have, have over you. So, and I think we might have got. I think we. I think we got that out of order. Well, uh, basically, what happens is, in they they confront her, they mm-hmm. tell her everything. They go to the solar panels, right. and then that's where Shirazi and her kind of have that heart to heart. And it's kind of like this show is weird. Um, like when it comes to stuff, because normally in a show like this, the the pairs would be Shirase and Kamari and then Yuzuki and uh, Hinata because they were introduced in like that order. (laughs) But they really make like Shirase and Hinata have a lot of interactions Mm -hmm. like together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you can definitely see like, this is, this is not just a, a, 
you know, one-sided type of friendship between a few of these girls. This is a friendship that is building, you know, between all four of uh-huh. these girls. You know, it's, it's going to be, you know, they do a very good job of that. So, mm-hmm. But uh, I guess uh, I, I would say that the long story short of, yeah. of their interactions here is Shirase goes on their fucking broadcast. Yeah. And just shames the fuck out of the shames yeah. the fuck yeah. out of those girls. So they end up show yeah they end up showing up again for the next broadcast, and they're sitting there they're waiting <laughs> they're they're waiting they show up and Shirase gets on and she tells them to kick rocks basically like yeah. you guys suck you do not have any right to treat my friend poorly you guys feel bad about treating my friend poorly you guys aren't real friends get well, the like heck you out of here feel bad she's like mm-hmm. you sh- like you like you shouldn't be trying to make yourself feel better. Because you guys did something bad, you should feel yep. bad. You should, you, like, you shouldn't be trying to make yourself feel good because, like, you, what you did was bad. Like, mm-hmm. realize that. Don't try to yep. aim to make yourself feel better about it. Try to grow from it. And yep. like, it's a really adult thing to do because that, like, a lot of people do try to, like, rectify, the, their, yeah, yeah, and try to make themselves feel better because they did a shitty thing. And now it's mm-hmm. like she's like, no, you did a shitty thing. Feel shitty. Grow up. And I'm like, mm-hmm. yep. And then oh, we yeah. all start crying. Yeah. <laughs> on, on live TV. Oh yeah. Good stuff. Real good stuff. Is Anthony frozen for anyone else? I never seen no Anthony in my life. Oh, Who are you talking about? Yeah, it looks like a frozen Anthony to me. Great. The podcast is supposed to be something I can just, like, make a couple cuts and post. This one is nope. so much nope. work. Here we go. You're and actually cutting it? Yeah, I always, um, I make a few, like, pause yeah. cuts and a few. DJ says a lot of stuff that doesn't make it into the final. He's not, he's afraid of our racism. <laughs> That's not. Really? That's not, says, we, should, we should. DJ says a lot of, a lot of stuff that isn't necessarily appropriate. Sounds like I need to turn it up a little bit. He's taking out the Brock Turner thing that I said. Good! Okay, we are on... (laughs) Okay, so we are on episode 12. My favorite. Which is a place further than the universe. This is... um, As as we've kind of talked about, this is one of the strong... This is the strongest episode in the entire series. So... um, at this point, we've had kind of developments for three out of our four main main characters. So it is it is just about time that Shirase kind of has some closure, and thankfully we kind of get that where all of the girls have kind of been falling into this great rhythm, and they're supposed to you know all help out, and they all get invited to go to um, this base, right? They're going out to the same base where they were supposed to set up this observatory, which was supposed to be used for, um, I think, I think it was like a sky, like a, like a sky observatory or, or like where they were going to build like a telescope. Um, all the girls, um, get ready to go, but then you, you find out that Shirase doesn't want to make the trip. Um, and it's loosely in part due to the, the kind of contention that, her and Jin kind of have, um, you know, where where it, it, there's just so many unspoken things that they have going on between them. And thankfully, this is a very, very heavy episode, too, where the feels really, really come out. And um, I want to say that it's, it's, it's somebody, is it somebody's birthday? Is that what happens? Uh, well, it was what's her name's birthday, and they make her a little cake. No, that's that was the last episode. That was the uh, episode. episodes ago. I'm trying to think that if it was like, I think it was just the nostalgia of the fact that this base was the last time that that Jin and Taka, Takako kind of saw each other. Yeah, because this is the, this base is where Takako went missing and mm-hmm. was declared dead. Right, right. So kind of unspoken so all of the other girls are ready to go they they really are trying to encourage shirase to go and that's when kanai kind of has this conversation with jin that that she should say something to 
uh, to Shirase. Like they should have a conversation. They should try and kind of talk everything out. And thankfully, we 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 get that. But it's not it's not until later on in the episode. I think all of the girls are kind of shown doing their own work right during this time, and they can kind of tell that Shirase is like apprehensive to go. Well, they they already had a really deep conversation on the boat, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Um, but I think they need more, and that's what she's telling her. That they right. knows that they need to go like more in depth in their relationship. Mm-hmm. This is where like the closure is kind of yeah. kind of come in. So, um, I think that it's when they are. Jin is like is is this when Jin is sitting on the steps, or is that the next episode? That's just when Jin was sitting on the yeah. steps. Yeah. And Shirazi kind of comes up behind her, and Jin kind of motions for her to sit down beside her, and they kind of talk about... Um, I mean, they talk about, a, they talk about a lot. They talk about how Takako kind of acted and, like, how she, how she was, you know, and how, how Jin kind of remembered her. And that's, that's kind of what I, what I love so much about this episode is because you really do get to see more of... Um, Jin's like personal affection for Takako. Well, yeah, not see, only yeah. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say yeah. You see, uh, like, not only do you see more of Takako and Jin's relationship, but like the whole episode, while um, showing like Shirase's growth, also serves as a way to show Jin's growth. Like, mm-hmm. uh, we don't see a lot of her, but this going to this base is much needed closure for both these characters, right? Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, Shirase, you know, finds like a laptop that used to belong oh, to her mother, too. And yeah, that's really yeah, important. Because yeah. there's actually a opening. Very the end of the episode, time. and it's full emails. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so she, she'd been sending her mother all these emails, you know, it's just kind of a remembrance. And she's able to actually open up her mom's laptop and look at all the emails that she'd been sending her. And uh, dude, this was when I was like, who is cutting onions, honestly? <laughs> I was going to say, there's two parts of this episode coupled together that brought water to my eyes. I didn't cry, but damn, was I close. Yeah, but oh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it's first when they get to the base, and Shiraza, after Shirazi and Jin kind of have their like closure to it, Shirazi shows up. They show up to the base, and Shirazi is like, well, I'm not sure. Like, this, Well, this was the last place my mom was. And so her friends just start manically searching the entire base and that kind of like made me a little teary eyed because I was like, Oh, you know, they really like this. They really care about each other. Mm-hmm. And then after finding the laptop and then she turns on the laptop and all those emails from her just start loading up and she just starts like crying and saying like mom over and over again. I was like, Oh God. You sent oh, a yeah. lot of yeah. emails. Mm. Well, I imagine it's like, well, three years uh, looked like at least an email a day, so that's like over a thousand. There was there was twelve hundred. Yeah, there was yeah. twelve hundred, I think, or something like that. Um, that's what box thing said. So yeah. I was like, damn. But, I mean, the throughout the series, right? You see her like sending emails to her mom, right? Mm-hmm. As like a mm-hmm. kind of in the background, mm-hmm. you know? Right, little blurbs like, "Hey, mom, I'm going. I'm finally coming. I'm like, I'm I'm going to Antarctica." So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I can. I can definitely attest to that, Jake. I, I w- <laughs> especially when she got a hold of the laptop. That that was when I was like, I, I have no shame. This is a very emo- an, an emotional episode. So, and it's not for the. It's, it's not for the for the sake of of the <laughs> of the story at all. Like it just it just drives that that plot and mm-hmm. moves it forward. I, I, I loved this episode a lot. So we get a nice little scene there at the end where the girls are here at this base. They are like, they're sitting on top of the roof and they're like playing music and like the, even the scene on the way to, um, <laughs> on the way to the base where they spend the time in the snow cats. Yeah. That's also a very poignant scene as well. Like it, it's, it's very, very, She's very strong. She says, were you guys in one of these when you lost my mom? Mm-hmm. You're like, oh fucks! Like, Yo, who remembers? Uh, who remembers? Um, uh, Hanada bringing a bringing a banana, and the, oh, yeah. and the, they use it. They use the frozen banana to nail a nail into like a piece of wood. Oh yeah, 
Just gonna Dude, drop like, this. What the hell? Dude, this is so <laughs> funny. Like, what? Uh, oh, yeah. like, what the Classic. Fuck? It's just, like, a good example of the kind of shit that they put in this show that's just, like, cute and, like, like juvenile, but super funny, right? Charming, right? It's charming. Yes, that is that is a perfect way to put it. Yeah. You know, moving on. And that's kind of the culm- that's kind of the culmination. I'd say that this is the this is the um, climax of the of the show. I'd say this is the finale almost, yeah. and episode thirteen is kind of an epilogue. Right. Yeah. Right. So, and that's that is a great this, way to. This kind is of... the one where we hit the moment, like that we've been right. waiting for. Like you're like, all right, from the very beginning, you're like, if this chick gets to Antarctica, like, what's mm-hmm. she gonna find there? Right. Like, what's gonna happen? Right. And this is the one where it answers that question. Right. We get the voiceover during this, too, where she is kind of explaining, you know, in part in relation to like her sitting at the desk, like going through the, the emails and she's holding her mom's book. Like, this is the closure that not only Shirazi needed, but the, but as the as an audience, this is the closure that we needed as well. And I would I would argue with anybody if they said otherwise like this. They did this just perfect. What if somebody argued that, but at the same time they argued the merit of Stop Diabolic Club? What would you do? <laughs> I'd strangle them to death. They said the. I don't really think that was that good of an anime, right? Especially that part yeah. where she she opened her mother's laptop. Also, Diabolic Lovers, best show I've ever seen. Oh, I'd take that person to Antarctica and I'd leave them. Oh no! <laughs> He'd talk a co, that bitch. The worst, the Ooh, worst ouch. type of. Uh, Oh, should I not crap. use her as a verb? I no, use, no, I don't think that that is appropriate. Can I, can I, should I not use leaving a person in Antarctica to die? Talk yeah. good. <laughs> talk good, bitch. So um, we move into, I don't want to call it the exposition, but it is the, um, oh gosh. Yeah, it is the finale. We move epilogue. right into the epilogue. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, Thank I was going to say was like, e- exposition. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll go on another journey. So um, previously, <laughs> uh, Yuzu has kind of had had this kind of thought, like, what's going to happen after we all stop, you know, hanging out here in An- Antarctica? Like, we're not going to stop being friends. And of course, like, of course not. That's not how friendships work. So but there's the, the the you know the looming idea of it in all their mm-hmm. heads you know they're like what if mm-hmm. oh yeah and they they show here we get we get some exposition you know too so let's just very like short exposition that's like in the form of like showing how uh how natural it is now for the girls to become part of this kind of working environment where they all have jobs that they do and they take care of and like they fit into this exploration you know ex- this expedition like Perfectly, they are a working cog in in a larger machine. So, um, we we do k- kind of get that looming journey's coming to an end. The end of their three months is coming soon, and like uh, this is like the sec- I, I, I want to say that this is like the second or third time skip. So that we that we get to so, uh, but it's right at the right at the end of the girls' journeys, and they're all going to take a trip. Where is the I can't remember what they they were doing. It's like some different ice breaking trip, I think, or something like that, right? Where they're going to to see where they're carving oh. off ice. They were gonna go. Uh, they were gonna do the winter, like the next winter. They were gonna go back. I thought. Yeah, they right? wanted to come back. Right. That kind of thought process. So yeah. they, but they end up going to uh, where Kanai kind of takes them to this kind of ice carving where. This ice is being chipped off of these glaciers, and you find out that this is the only thing that they can take back home to study. Mm-hmm. So, and they eat some. Yep, and they eat some. Yep, <laughs> they like oh, they make the like little snow. Uh, yeah, they make like little snow mm-hmm. snow cones. <laughs> and uh, this is <laughs> one of the cutest scenes that were uh, cherry sauce on them too, right? Yeah, yeah, something red. Where they're sitting there and they're like having the discussion about, you know, what future journeys they're going to take and how their friendship is, you know, kind of grown so much. And then they <laughs> they get, uh, or no, who who, get, who gets uh, kidnapped? No, attacked by little penguins. It's Shirazi. Oh, she gets uh, Shirazi. Like, 
<laughs> and she goes, help. Like, I'm so happy, but they and smell so bad. they're all taking pictures, and they're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's like, oh, I said help. <laughs> yeah, yeah, classic. So when we go back, uh, flashes back to the base, and we kind of get a heart-to-heart uh, between everybody and these high school girls. And, like, uh, Jin goes, okay, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you one last request for your one last day. And they go, well, we want to hang out and play with everybody. So they end up playing American, America's Pastime. It was <laughs> softball. Oh, oh, softball. Yeah, baby. Uh-huh. Same thing. I mean, it's thing. pretty big in Japan, dude. It's oh, pretty yeah. big. Oh, yeah. Speaking of which, I was on a uh, one ounce uh, podcast with Anime Ricochet. We'll talk about that. Oh, earlier, when people don't <laughs> skip the spoiler section. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, they uh, end up playing baseball with everyone on the base, and uh, <laughs> everyone's uh, on one base. How do they fit? No, like the base, uh, like Sai Sai Nuwa. Third base, fourth base. Fifth base. You're funny. You're hilarious. Yeah. And Jin is regarded as the the scariest pitcher it ever. Jin Rondek. <laughs> yeah. Right. And uh, Shiraze finds out that there was only one other person that could hit Jin's pitches, and that was her mom. Well, the basically, mom. the one person who could dodge the ball and hit well, it at the same is, yeah. time. <laughs> Yeah. Because she, she uh, Jin doesn't throw like strikes; she yeah. throws balls right at people. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and that's what ends up happening. Uh, surprise! Uh, Shirase kind of jumps out of the way, and at the same time, the bat strikes the ball, and uh, they get a nice little uh, <laughs> home run. A home run, yeah. It's like a happy scene. So, then they skip to. I want to say that it's just like their closing thoughts, right? Well, she gets a haircut. That's right. She yeah. gets a haircut, makes her look more like her mom. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. the girls say goodbye to everybody. Yeah. And that one guy uh, gets her, gets uh, Yuzi, uh, Yuzuki to sign his um, I don't CD. Know who, right? yeah, CD. And then, uh, and then they fly away and then they have their little, they have their shared like monologue of how mm-hmm. like their journey's over but doesn't mean that they like just because the journey's over doesn't mean that the experiences that they had with one another will like are over as well. It's really mm-hmm. it's really cute. It's a very good it's kind of almost like an anime I would show to like a child or yeah. like a develop like a like an 8-year-old to just show them like hey this is adulting. <laughs> like <laughs> I mean this is what friendships are going to be like right, just because right. like just because you you and your friend disagree on something doesn't mean that you don't have to be friends anymore and stuff. But it, it's, it's a very wholesome show. Very oh, wholesome. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, and then in the end, they they finally get to see the uh, Aurora Borealis. So, oh. Actually, Anthony. Aurora is. That isn't the Aurora Borealis. Oh, what is it? It's, uh, it's Aurora Australis? Or yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right, true. because Borealis it's different hemisphere. Yeah, yeah, Borealis is north. Yeah. Good point. Well, that's the Borealis is bore. <laughs> the Borealis is so. <laughs> because I, I only bring that yeah, up, anyway. Anthony, because we do see a picture of the Aurora Borealis later. Do yeah. we really? Yeah. That was a nice that was a nice little yeah. Megu, a Megumi wrap That's up. right, that's right, yeah. At the yeah. end. Or Get she's some... doing her own thing, independent of yep. of you know Kimara. Yeah, yep. It's Kimara, definitely yeah. Nice. It is. It is very cute. So, um, while we're still in the spoiler sections, I mean, is there anything else that we wanted to kind of talk about with the with the anime? We did really, really break down this. Uh, yeah, these, we, these episodes. I feel like Dude, we uh, talking about it all the way through. What's up? Uh, what's it? What's her name? Yukiko or whatever the celebrity one. Yuzuki. I don't know why I'm forgetting this now. Her signature, hella funny. Oh, that looks just... like an idol. Like yeah, I know. yeah, yeah. That was pretty goofy. Uh, I like that. Just again, like talking, like talking over on me remembering the anime as we're talking about it. Mm-hmm. I just like, I just can't believe how set up the whole Hinata situation is. Like, because even in Singapore, she sees like that track team. And, right, and right, she kind of right. just like she stares at him, and I thought, ah, uh, Hinata, 
doesn't like girls in uniform. I don't know. <laughs> it never clicked. And Maybe then got right. a thing for uh, sexy girls, huh? And then her unif- and then uh, her episode just ties in all these little things. I'm like, damn it! Like, oh, yeah. that's so good. And then and same thing with the whole time. Uh, like the final picture that uh, Megumi sends, mm-hmm. because like when she uh, there's that episode where um, Tamari's talking about texting her, and Megumi is reading books about the Arctic, right. While she's texting her, and then she's just like, oh, she's like, hey, I'm home. Well, guess what? That's too bad, because I'm in the Arctic. <laughs> right. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it a lot. I thought that was really rad. Um, they, <laughs> they they do have a lot of small little nuances that, that honestly, it does... It, I would say that this show is worth, the, worth watching again. You know, it is something that I would absolutely turn on, you know, and, and enjoy. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Well, sweet. Sweet. Um, that being said, I mean, I guess we can kind of end uh, spoiler section on, on Jake's Q. Got it. Okay. All right. We'll end spoilers in three, two, one. Welcome back. Oh, if you spoilers skip... are over. Yeah, they're done. If you, uh, if you Welcome back. If you skipped the spoiler section of the podcast, um, we recommend definitely uh, checking it out if you've watched the show because I'm pretty sure we all think that uh, you should watch the show. And experience it for yourself. Yeah. After the oh, yeah. like after the spoilers, we normally like to go into our um, review slash uh, rating system, where we give a spoiler-free review of uh, our thoughts on the anime, as well as give it one of our ratings in our rating system. And um, Alex, uh, I'm not sure if you're uh, familiar with our rating system, so I'll go ahead and I'll break it down for you. Uh, we have three categories, uh, the first one being trash, an anime that really isn't too good, um, has like no redeeming qualities, and quite frankly shouldn't be watched. Like, don't waste your time on it. I like the 1 to 10 scale. Yeah, it's kind of, we only have like three though. And then our second one is, uh, the recycling bin, and the recycling bin is, if you think the anime has merit, it's not very. It maybe for you, it's not your cup of tea, but you understand that it's good for a certain audience. Um, that's what you put it in the recycling bin. Grumbling. If and then finally we have a find, and that's an anime that you think is good all around that you would go and you'd recommend to people to go watch. It warms you up real nice. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. So uh, since you're our guest, uh, you'll go ahead and go last and. <clears throat> Uh, DJ, how about you start us off? This anime is fine. It's a big old good one. Um, uh, you know, if you're looking for a good anime that's going to make you smile, it's going to make you happy, it's going to make you want to go, ooh, man, this was, this was nice to watch. If you're feeling down, watch this anime. If you're feeling happy and you want to stay happy, watch this anime. If you like penguins, watch this anime. And that's that's that. That's how the cookie crumbles. Right All there. Right. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll go next. Um, for me, uh, I agree with DJ. This show is definitely a find. Um, it, it reminds me a lot of Made in Abyss, which is a very weird comparison. Um, but it's a story about a very determined protagonist uh, looking to achieve a goal that no one thinks is possible. And them going against the odds, and that's just a fun, like that's just a fun base plot to begin with. But then you couple that with a very cute design, a very wholesome cast, as well as great character development uh, all the way through, and an amazing, uh, amazing background background visuals, and uh, and just fantastic uh, art direction with as well as great, like, music. This show is just so good. Is Like, it, watching it is definitely an experience. So, I de- yeah, definitely a find. So, Anthony, you're up. Yeah, I have been trying to watch this show for a very long time, and admittedly, I'm kicking myself now. If I could go back and see past me what he was like, oh, should I watch... 
uh, My Hero Academia, or should I watch A Place Further Than the Universe? I probably would have smacked him and said, you watch A Place Further Than the Universe, boy, you're not going to regret it. But then I wouldn't be able to talk about it on this podcast. So, well, kind of depends on how you look at it. This this show for me is if if Yuri on Ice for D it, for DJ is the perfect show. This this for me is the perfect show. I would say that the from everything down to our con- consistent gripes that we have with anime, the pacing, the character development, the story the plot, in combination with the art style and. Uh, direction of the anime itself. This, this show does such a great job, and and honestly, it is as Jake kind of mentioned, an experience to watch just because you feel a full range of emotions. I think one thing that really you know kind of drives that point home is how, and again, you know, I've been criticized for this before, but how relatable the characters are. The, they are going through real life experiences that honestly, aren't that outlandish. You know, if you've ever been traveling, you understand the anxiety of traveling and what could go wrong. But then you also experience the little nuances that that are kind of written into the show with the animation and the writing itself. They do such an excellent job. You know, when we've talked about how, honestly, I could rewatch this this show and experience the same exact thing, if not an even deeper experience after watching it. This, this show is absolutely a find. This is probably, as of right now, I would recommend this show first and foremost. Right after that, it would be Made in Abyss, uh, just because it is so, so good. Um, again, find. Put this at the top of your list. You should be watching it right now. All right, Alex, take us home. Well, it's a find from me, Captain. Um, yeah, I'd say <laughs> you know pretty much hits all the, hits all the big checkpoints for me. you got great art. You know, really catchy music, kind of a an inspiring adventure-based storyline, and you know that's pretty much all I need to be honest. Um, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of, uh, you know, cute little funny weird penguins and shit doesn't hurt at all. I'm into that. It's pretty good. So, yeah, it's, that's a fine for me, right? I'd I'd probably I'd watch it again. There's not a lot of animes that I feel like I'd I'd really want to, you know, invest the time to watch again, but this one would be cool. Like, if I was going to go to Antarctica sometime, you know, in the next few years, I'd be like, yeah, I'll watch a place uh, further in the universe <laughs> again. Might as well. Yeah, right? as well. Watch it on your way to Antarctica. Exactly. That's exactly. true. That's true. I, I suppose I could do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, no, it's, it, it really succeeds in the, the nuances in the art and in the writing. Like, it just, it really nails it, you know? Yeah, very good job. Yeah. And it's definitely, a good show. definitely ins- inspiring in certain parts. Like, Boom. like I said, it may not inspire me to go to Antarctica, but it does inspire me to take a like go on a go on an adventure sometime. Mm-hmm. And even in, even in just like the the relationships that these girl that these girls build as well, I'd say that you know in certain content that you watch that is inspiring in that sense, it's like you're the. It's it's not as simple as just like the friendship kind of growing. The, the show really teaches you, you know what what the definition of friendship is truly about. It is truly about the experience. It is truly about, you know, it, it, trust and you know how far you're willing to actually go and and do things for for your friends, you know, and and kind of grow that grow that relationship. I I, I loved it. I so. you know, if you want to be my lover. You got to get with my friends. <laughs> uh, okay. The truth. And then uh, I guess one final question I have for uh, for you, Alex, is at, at the start of this podcast, you said that you uh, you haven't really watched a lot of uh, slice of life anime. Uh, after watching this, are you more like apt to go like watch like more slice of life anime or like do you think this was kind of like that rare occurrence? Uh, no, I mean, I feel like this is kind of the direction I've been. I've been going now for a while after, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like I, I recently watched Kona Suba, which I feel like was almost, even though it's still action-based, right? It's still, like, them just fucking around. Yeah, you know, I, lo- I love Kona right? Suba. It's, it's funny as hell. Um, and then, like, I'm watching um, Violet Evergarden, too, which I guess is also kind of similar. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely kind of where I'm going, right? I like, you know, these... 
these really good, like, kind of inspiring stories and stuff. So, I mean, yeah, I'd, this anime definitely kind of opened me up. I don't think I've ever watched anything that's really just, you know, like, basically real life, you yeah. know, um, just, like, a good story. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm more apt to absolutely, I don't know, what was that one that you said, Anthony, that you like? The n- number two option? Oh, Made in Abyss. Made in Abyss, though, is, is more on the action-y side. Than- yeah. Slice yeah. of life. It, it combines basically just about everything that I kind of talked about here. The biggest point that I have for watching Maiden Abyss is the art style, you know, but I will save that for hopefully a podcast. Like, <laughs> we watch Maiden Abyss, please. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Nah. Yeah, nah. No, I'm kidding. Um, all right. Well, uh, thanks. Uh, thank you, Alex, for coming on the podcast and watching the show with us. Awesome. Yeah, no Love problem. It. It's a good yeah. time. I, I'd do it again. Oh, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. It's been a pleasure. And would you do it every week, maybe? Um, <laughs> he's, just like, he's like, will you tag me that's out? That's a big anime. Well, <laughs> uh, well, if it's that's, a big, anime. that's a big Ooh. news. We don't even do it every week. If we're yeah. watching garbage, uh, I don't want to watch garbage. Remember when I said I don't watch garbage anime? Yeah, you're like, well, no, it's, it's, not only does he not watch garbage anime, he doesn't want to watch garbage anime. I don't it's, want it's not called to. the anime Best Buy dive. It's that's called why, the anime Best That's why I'm like looking through my list of animes I've watched, and I'm like, there's no garbage ones on here, because I've never finished a garbage <laughs> one. Like, I think it's well, garbage. Buddy, have I got it's a question? Top- if I got a quick little 15-minute episode uh, <laughs> show for you. I want you to make a disgusted this? face and show me your pants. Yep, that one. Uh, Ooh. <laughs> at, uh, normally at this point uh, in the podcast, we would jump into our currently airing po- um, anime, which uh, for this season is Zombieland Saga. Ooh, that's but, supposed to be good. But here's the thing. Uh, this podcast is already really long. Yes, it is. And Zombieland Saga's last two episodes, I feel like have been very dependent on each other and are going to be very dependent on the finale. I agree. Yes. So I think uh, we should save these uh, two episodes of Zombieland Saga and just talk about episodes uh, 10, 11, and 12 as a whole um, in a few days when we record our Zombieland uh, Zombieland Saga podcast. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Egregiously. So... um, if you would like to see more of our content, you can like this video and subscribe. You can also find us on our Twitters and Discord. And if you like Alex, you can actually find him on his uh, Twitter. Yeah, it's Infantinho. Uh, I-N-F-A-N-T-I-N-H-O-E. Infantino. Uh, that uh, we'll go ahead and we'll put that down in the links as well. Link in bio. <laughs> link in bio. Uh, we'll put that down in the links as well. And Anthony, you were on a podcast pretty recently that wasn't this one. I was. I was an honored guest over at the Anime Ricochet. Um, They're a great group of guys that add review sports anime. If you go check out their podcast, we'll link that in the description below as well. I was on a baseball anime. Bet you didn't know I like baseball. I also noticed, Anthony, because I listened to that uh, that podcast, you didn't mention you played soccer with me. I uh, didn't. You I just said swimming a, and you watch baseball. It's a part, baseball. It's a part like, of my you, Anthony. It's a part of <laughs> bowling. <laughs> fuck you, Anthony. He mentioned bowling, it's, but not soccer with you. Yeah, no, past. right? I'm, uh, trying to past. Past. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, absolutely. Yeah, go check out uh, Jeff and Kobe over there. They they do great reviews. They're currently also reviewing Zombieland Saga as well. So if you want to. Uh, kind of look at the contrast between both of our anime, anime reviews yeah. between both channels. I totally recommend doing that as well. Um, all right. Uh, thanks again to our special guest, Alex. It means a lot that you were able to come in and watch this with us. Yes. Thank yeah. you very much, Alex. We love I'm you. going to sleep. Thanks yeah. guys. Right. <laughs> uh, Good night. All right. yeah, that was Alex saying goodbye. Yeah. Uh, anyone, uh, any other thing? DJ have another funny quip to leave on everybody, you know, just <clears throat> go, you know, you, you guys, you guys are, you know, the best, and and we love you. Ooh. Oh. Merry Christmas, everybody. We're going to have another one between now and Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> uh, Twice the Christmas. Twice the Christmas. Second Christmas. <laughs>